Hi, we're glad you're here, and we're about to begin. Five, four, three, two, one. KenCast After Dark. Stimulating conversations all night long. And here's your host, Ken Cole. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Ken Cass After Dark. Thanks for joining me tonight. We have a great show for you today. For all of you Cobra Kai fans, all of you Karate Kid fans out there, this has been a very exciting week because we've seen the return, the confirmed return of Mike Barnes to Cobra Kai Season 5. So we're going to talk all about that tonight. We're going to have a great conversation. Just thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, and because we're talking about such a classic Karate Kid 3 character, I thought we'd bring in one of our resident experts on Terry Silver, Karate Kid 3, and just 80s, 90s movies in general. You've seen him before. Please welcome Drew from the Last Row <laughs> Podcast. Hey, hey, I got to give you credit, man. That that intro is is amazing there. I, I feel honored <laughs> to be part of that. That was like just about like our 80s conversation. I love the music, man. Nice job there. That Thank was you. awesome. <laughs> hey, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's great. This is guys. This is a new vibe. We, uh, you know, you might have seen Ken cast on Saturdays during the day. You know, it's a lot of high energy stuff. I, you know, we're just relaxing now. It's it's nighttime. I'm just gonna have some relaxing conversations. I feel like I gotta so. turn my my lights out. It's after dark here, right? Like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, Drew, thanks for coming. Uh, I know everyone watching is going to be eager to hear your thoughts. Um, you know, you are one of the original fans of Terry Silver. Um, you, of course, had that classic podcast episode, The Ballad of Terry Silver, on your last row podcast. And I'm just re really excited to have you here tonight so you can talk about another great character, Mike Barnes, and Cobra Kai Season 5 and what we can expect. Um, and for everyone who hasn't heard about your podcast can you give us a, a quick overview of the last row podcast sure yeah it's uh it's a movie podcast that we do it's a lot about like i would say they're almost like rewatchable type movies movies that maybe you know you, you forgot you loved um we do a lot of 80s and, and 90s films uh, we did an episode a long time ago called the ballad of terry silver before we even knew what terry was up to between karate kid 3 and the latest seasons of cobra kai so go check it out um our website's the last row podcast.com we have a lot of classic episodes so it's our most recent one was, I don't know if it was a classic movie, but it's the butterfly effect. Uh, we try not to break down the plot too much. It's more exploring the world of the movies and some silly characters. And we have a big, uh, a big love for cheesy villains like uh, Big T himself, Terry. So <laughs> that's great. Yeah, it's great. Everyone check it out. I know, I know everyone is going to be a fan of a lot of the movies you've covered on the last row podcast. Um, I just want to take a quick second, Drew. We're, I've got a lot of people saying, saying hello. We've got, Peter from Cobra Kai Companion Podcast. Who's that girl that opened up? Is she hot? Well, gosh, I don't, I can't really say. We have a professional relationship. Uh, <laughs> Cecilia, Terry Silver loves it after dark. That's great. I love it. Um, talking Star Wars, good to see you. Does Barnes back mean either a mention or will Dennis and Snake appear? I Drew, I think we need to get into this oh, a yeah. little bit. So guys, stick around. Oh, We're yeah. going to talk all about that. Um Seema, hi, Ken. So excited about Barnes coming back. Yeah, yeah. I know we all are. Thank you, guys. It's great to see you. Uh, Roy, good to see you. Ben, Ben Urban, Mike Barnes. Everyone else is karate is a joke. <laughs> Daniel says, hey, Drew. Hey, Ken. Hey. Hey. So, guys, just feel free to, you know, throw your comments in the chat. We want to hear your thoughts as well. we'll try to get to as many uh, of your comments as possible. Um, but Drew, I think maybe since this has been such a big week in news, uh, we should get to some news. Sure. Ken cast news. Ooh. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I love it. Nice. Um, okay. So the biggest news, obviously, um, everyone has seen this, uh, Cobra Kai season five, Sean Cannon returns to Miyagi verse. And uh, we finally see Sensei Kim Daun. Alicia Hannah Kim is the actress who plays Sensei Kim Daun. So, Drew, you, you know, you told me, I think you were like, you got out of a meeting. You're like, whoa, wait, Barnes is back. <laughs> so how, how did this hit you? So I, I was I was actually like completely tied up to the point where I was I might as well have been in a black hole during the workday. And I hadn't seen any news. 
and I saw my phone was like blowing up. I'm like, what's going on here? So I got a ton of text messages. I saw some from, from you guys and I saw some, some from my friends and I wasn't sure what was going on. And then eventually after the day was over, I was trying to catch up on everything and I saw the picture and I was like, oh my God, how did I miss this? So I was, I was blown away the fact that they, they dropped this. I, in a weird way, I was wondering if it would just be a surprise during the season and they wouldn't tell us at all. So I was actually kind of surprised that they did show it, but somewhat, I guess, excited, but also wish it was a surprise. I'm conflicted. I don't know how you felt about it, but I, I was like conflicted about it. I'm excited, obviously. Right. And guys, yeah, I, you know, I agree with you. Like a lot of people have talked about, you know, Mike Barnes, should they have shown him number one yet, or should he have been a surprise? Um, or should they have revealed him in this way? Um, it's a great shot. I'm excited that Mike Barnes is back, but yeah, I kind of, I wish maybe it wasn't necessarily as part of a photo dump. Maybe it was part of like a trailer yeah. and it's a really cool moment where you're like, Whoa, Oh, Mike Barnes. And there's that anticipation, um, just because he's such a classic character. That's just my opinion. Uh, but it's great to see him. I think it's a great shot and we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, it's almost like when we saw Terry, right? When they revealed the the Terry, you got that awesome. It, it wasn't a photo dump. It was like the shot of him with the silhouette and his yes. ponytail. Right. Like there was a huge lead up to that. And and for as much as everyone's been expecting to see Barnes, it, it was kind of a little odd. It was just like a photo. And I'm not saying it's a bad photo by any means. It's, right. a, it's I'm intrigued by what the heck is actually happening in that photo, which I'm sure we'll talk about. But uh, it, it was just a surprise. I didn't expect to see it. I thought they would save it for the show. But I guess, you know, as some folks have said in the chat, like it's a good publicity thing to get people hyped for the show, which is good about like a month out here. Right. Exactly. And Daniel says, yes, they gave Barnes the worst character introduction. Even Allie got a better one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. Allie uh, played by Elizabeth Shue. Mm -hmm. um, Cecilia says Barnes looks so happy in that picture. Can't wait for his reunion. <laughs> Danny boy. Yes. Yes. I totally agree. Um, well, okay. So we're going to be getting back to Mike Barnes. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Um, but we do have, uh, a bit more news. So I want to kind of get your reaction to this. I don't know if you saw this guys, a site named Murphy's multiverse is reporting that Sony is looking to move forward with a new karate kid theatrical film. Um, and sorry for these ads that are popping up, but we'll just kind of go through this. We here at Murphy's Multiverse can exclusively reveal that Sony is looking to cast a teen lead for a new Karate Kid film. Sony is looking for a 17-year-old male Chinese actor who speaks both Mandarin and English. The character is referred to as Lee and is said to be small for his age, but tough, smart, and scrappy. He's said to be a skilled fighter and a student in Beijing who finds his life uprooted after his mother moves them from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Lee is said to be struggling with a past tragedy, which drives a wedge between him and his doctor mom, who has managed to handle the same tragedy in her own way. After Lee meets Mia, a student from his high school, and her father, Victor, at a local pizza restaurant, he soon finds his life has changed yet again for the better. Lee soon finds, Lee soon finds himself training Victor in the art of Kung Fu, despite his mother's stance against violence and fighting and ultimately back in the ring himself uh script doesn't yet have a director but there's a writer attached and then they talk about how there's a deal in place with the big three john josh and hayden who created uh cobra kai but that this looks to be separate this looks to be like a theatrical offshoot okay guys okay drew what so let me ask you what what do you think of this news i <laughs> I'm not going to say that I'm familiar with Murphy's Multiverse, a website. I had not seen this news anywhere else. I had heard that they are looking to expand the universe and, and especially with the popularity of this show and, you know, maybe the return of some martial arts films and, and movies. I'm conflicted on it because I kind of want to see more about other characters. We've talked on, on your show before, uh, the, the, the Ken cast during the day, not the after dark of where we've talked about, maybe having some prequel type shows with, you know, crease and silver and, and, and the young actors that play them. I think I'd be more interested in seeing something like that personally. Right. I don't want to knock it before it comes out if this is real, but I had not seen this anywhere else. So I'm surprised that, you know, it, it, it wasn't on like deadline or something like that. So, you know, I, I don't want to knock it before it comes out, but I, I thought it was interesting. The part where you read in the article where it says, 
if I'm understanding this right, is he training the father? Because it says that he's training Victor, which is odd. So yeah, I, it's like a weird thing. It's almost like a reverse, uh, reverse movie where the younger right. person is training the older person. So that's an interesting spin on it if this is real. But I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> right. What about right. you? I don't know. We've got some good comments. Like Addie says, I think Sony could have come up with it. Liz, good to see you, Liz. That synopsis sounded like a duplicate mistake of what happened in Jane Smith's The Kung Fu Kit, right? Which is called The Karate Kid. Yeah. Well, Drew, you and I just a few weeks ago talked about The Karate Kid, the original movie, being a classic. You know, we consider it a classic. Yep. And I think that this sounds like it could be an interesting story, maybe in its own right but I'm really not sure about putting the Karate Kid brand on it. Yeah. Um, it sounds different. Uh, the, it seems like there are enough different elements that they really shouldn't set that expectation up with the original Karate Kid story. Uh, probably should be called something else. Just in my opinion, um, I don't know. It's almost setting it up for failure, I think. Yeah, especially with the 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 maybe the the piece that touch back to we talked about the jaden smith one here i don't know how well that was received i mean maybe people who didn't have familiarity with the original franchise liked it more i think others it's like call it something else i mean it's a cool it sounds like it could be an interesting story i think they're slapping the karate kid name on it to maybe get more publicity to to the point you were making and and again nothing against it i just I don't know. I feel like call it something else. It's like when they did, uh, we talked about this on your show before too, the remake of Point Break. Okay, do you really need to call it Point Break? It could just be something else, but they called it Point Break so that they get you know people coming back to it or the Total Recall remake. Like, Do you really need to remake that? Like, I don't right. know. <laughs> right, so. right. Yeah, it's kind of like a, maybe a cash. I mean, from a business perspective, it makes sense. You're, right. It's like a cash grab. Ooh, ooh, everyone's going to go see it because they know what the Karate Kid is. But Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Probably a lot of people talented people associated with it but and i don't want to trash it obviously before it gets off the ground sure. uh, but yeah is, it almost seems like yeah make it a new story make it a make it a different story i don't yeah. know just just my thought um melissa can hold bonsai thank you thank you thank you guys um it's great to hear from you morgan says seems like a money grab to me yes yes indeed um okay other news if you haven't seen it yet guys check out cobra cole if you're a fan of cobra kai this stars david shatra who plays tom cole on Cobra Kai. And of course, my name is Ken Cole. And uh, in Karate Kid 3, there was a character named Willie Cole that had some kind of tie to Terry Silver. So what's going on here? Uh, there's only one way to find out. Uh, check out Cobra Cole. There's a link in the description. It's on my channel. Uh, a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to make. Um, okay, Drew. Let's, <laughs> let, let's talk here. You have, and I'll, I'll just put it back. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. You have crafted villain playing cards and i just flashed one up briefly for terry silver do you want to give us an intro of, of what this sure. is and the progress because some people may have heard this about sure this yeah we, we talked about this on the last ken cast that i was a part of so if, if if you were there thanks for for checking it out and for all the great comments uh if you haven't seen this i'll give you a little bit of a background but on my podcast, uh, the one that, that Ken mentioned, we tend to love our villains. And what better villain to talk about than Terry Silver? So we we created a patented Last Row podcast villain scale so that we could objectively rate all the villains that we have on our show. We started it around episode 70 or so, I think. And um, we're up to like 112 now. So we've been doing it for quite a while here. But uh, what we tried to do is create specific rules or specific categories so that we could objectively rate these guys. So there's their look or their style, their hideout or their lair, their henchmen, uh, and, and, and some other items here too. But there's these four categories, and we try to rate these folks on, on a one to five scale. And I'm a big uh, I'm a big comic book geek, right? I love my comic cards. I have comic books on the wall over here and stuff like that. So when I was younger, we had these Marvel trading cards, and I still have a box of them, actually. So I remember these things vividly. I used to collect them. And if, if anyone remembers these things, you would get like power ratings on the back. It was like their intelligence or their strength. It's a lot of fun. And you can see how Captain America ranks against like, you know, the Incredible Hulk or something like that. And they would have like Magneto and stuff like that. So uh, I, I've always been a huge fan of those. So I thought, man, what if we tried to make these cards for the villains that we have <laughs> on on our show? And uh, we've always loved Terry Silver, me and my co-host Badway. 
I have to give him a shout out for his excellent writing skills. I came up with the design, but uh, copied the Marvel cards, but he wrote a lot of the descriptions and uh, we just, we've been having fun with it. So we're in the process of sort of making some cards for all the old villains that we have on our show. And we're kind of working through that right now, but I wanted to share with your audience because I feel like the, the group that, that watches this show would really appreciate this. And, and I yes. think it, it, it went over pretty well, but uh, we've created these. And, and like I said before, what, better person to start than with terry silver so yes it it, it it actually ranks directly to the scale that we gave him when we did it on your talking terry show on your on your youtube channel where we we gave him a, a rating and he is right now the top of our villain scale uh he is the highest rated villain that we've we've had on the show besides the superstorm from the day after tomorrow which kind of isn't fair <laughs> so <laughs> but it's not great i'm in the process of creating these for for all of our all of our villains and i'm gonna try to I'm gonna. I would love to print these if I didn't get sued. So we'll, we'll see. But it would be a lot of fun to to have these for for all of our villains. But this is the Terry Silver card, and you know it's so hard to pick a picture for Terry Silver because you know. But what better picture than the one of him talking to to Crease in in the steam room? So oh, I think go with that classic. one. Classic. So, <laughs> so classic. we'll uh, we'll we'll wind up probably unveiling a, a broader pack of these things upcoming but these these are a lot of fun and, and hopefully people enjoy them and I'll, i'm gonna make sure to put them on our social channels so if you're looking for us uh, our website the last podcast.com we'll put it on twitter facebook uh you know instagram and all that other stuff but these are fun so hopefully you guys enjoy them <laughs> yeah absolutely this this is so much fun and i just want to point out terry silver's ranked highly but this is an objective scale so he actually came out that way yeah like it wasn't stacked in terry's favor like he actually fulfilled all those qualities yeah. to be like the best and we had an in-depth discussion on this and you have to go back there's a video where when we first were on ken's channel we we had we talked about this directly and we we had reasons for why his his look and style was a five i mean how are you going to argue that ponytail right. but there was other reasons too and and uh you're right it's an objective scale so we didn't just arbitrarily give these numbers this is there's reasons for it so <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That's that's exciting stuff. I cannot wait to see more cards. And if anyone uh, has legal experience in the chat and wants to uh, let <laughs> us know if Drew's OK, because we'd love to see it printed. So let yeah. us know if you think it's OK for Drew to print these. <laughs> so um, I know the world would like to see it. Uh, Bamboo Grove. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for the super chat. Love super chats here. They help support the channel. They they pay the bills, keep the lights on and uh, help us bring great stuff for you. So thank you so much, Bamboo Grove. Um, David, uh, still want to know who Tori's dad is. Yeah. You know, with the bad temper. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I, yeah, this is, I love watching your comments guys, because we're going to be uh, getting to all this tonight. We're going to have just a lot to talk about, um, as we, as we move through. And I wanted to, if I can pull this up, I want to bring up a kind of a special video that uh, I know we're waiting for the trailer uh, for Cobra Kai season five, but um, Christian Crow, he did this incredible trailer last year for season four. And I wanted to share with you uh, the trailer that he did for season five before we get the real one coming out in the next week or two. Uh, let's take a second and watch Christian's trailer. Uh, I, th I think it's pretty cool. So check it out. Everyone has a weakness, John. And mine is you. We'll soon be opening Cobra Kai franchises throughout the entire valley so every one of you can be part of our championship dojo. I did everything I thought was right. You're the best. Today is a turning point at Cobra Kai. Take your fears and turn them into a weapon. Come join us. This is what we're up against. I know Silver isn't afraid of putting kids in harm's way. And that's why I have to take him down. You're the best. How could you take me down to Mexico and not mention we were coming to get Miguel? There's only one way to end this. Cut 
the head off the snake. That's the big plan. No, 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 I didn't mean literally cut his head off. You're playing with fire, Danny boy. And I am gasoline. We're not friends. We never will be. They should hire him, man. <laughs> yeah, he's Christian's Netflix. really good. That was amazing. That, that was, was awesome. <laughs> Very so good. Yeah. Christian, guys, that's Christian Crow who who put that together. He did one last year for season four, got hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube. And that's when he did this year for season five, uh, just to get us hyped and get us ready for for the season. Just an amazing job. And tidbit, he kind of redid the music and uh, he did the vocals on the music for that. So that was that was really cool. That so if amazing. if you want to see it again, it's in the description. So uh, just check it out and um, you know and subscribe to him. He, he puts out lots of great stuff. So um, uh, hey, Strike First Media, hey. good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. Um, excellent, excellent. Um, and Josh, okay, he, he has an idea. Mike Barnes is a good guy now. He returns because. He watches Cobra Kai's commercials, Terry Silver. Mike hates Terry because Mike lost with his tactics. Mike uh, hates Terry like Johnny hates Daniel in season one. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yes, uh, Drew, we are about to get to that. Um, one other bit of news before we get to our discussion. Uh, guys, I just want to let you know that I did a video, actually, a deep dive on Mike Barnes like over a year ago. It's called Mike Barnes Master Bully. Okay. Uh, some of you have seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet and you want to get up to speed on Mike Barnes, this might be a good place to start because we got a special comment from Sean Kanan, the actor who played Mike Barnes. He said, very incisive. Thanks for making this excellent deep dive into the psyche of Mike Barnes. So that was so cool. Um, Sean Kanan, great guy. He did an interview uh, with me uh, over a year ago and um, really cool that he saw this video and, and liked it. So um and I am happy to have uh, Drew here with me today because there are a few people on this planet, I think, who can talk <laughs> about the characters of Karate Kid 3 like Drew. Uh, and so today, guys, we are about to launch into our discussion. So hang on. We're going to get to all of your questions. Here we go. Ken cast discussion. All right. Ooh. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, guys, we uh, we got a dump of photos. Obviously, you've seen them. And uh, to but kind of focus our minds, I'm going to bring up first the photo of Mike Barnes. OK, just because, you know, this is a natural place to start. I know a lot of you are wondering about Mike Barnes. Uh, I've done a number of like videos and uh, discussions. I did one with Peter from Cobra Kai Companion and um, but Drew. I want to get your thoughts now. We're going to we're going to go deep. We're going to go from a a classic perspective. This is the Barnes we know in Karate Kid 3. He might be kind of a new character to a lot of people even watching this live stream. So I'm wondering, can you give us a brief background on Mike Barnes and what you think of this image? Uh so first off, I'm super excited to see that he's back. It's it's been one of those situations where it's been speculated upon again just like Terry was from the very beginning of when Cobra Kai was, you know, conceived, it's like, oh, we're we gonna get all these classic characters. So the fact that we're getting him back is amazing, and Sean Kanan's awesome too. And and I'll echo what what Ken said. If you haven't watched that video that he put together, it is a masterclass in breaking down the character of Mike Barnes. It is incredible. So for me, I think the biggest thing that I'm the most excited about, and and what I think is so interesting about Mike Barnes is that he's a mercenary, at least in Karate Kid Three. He's a hired gun. And he's coming out of nowhere and he's karate's bad boy. He's going to try to take out the champ, Daniel Russo. And Terry Silver is playing all kinds of mind games 
he hires this guy. He <laughs> hires another teenager, I guess, or however old Mike Barnes was at the time to try to mess with the other teenager. That's just how, how Terry rolls. So the fact that he comes back and we don't really know much about what type of character he's playing. Is he on Terry's side? Is he against Terry? Is he good? Is he bad? Is he a complete wild card? Uh, I, I don't know. And I think that's the most intriguing thing about this character. And, and I think the coolest thing is, you know, it's introducing more of Karate Kid 3, which has always been this movie that we've talked about on this show before. People haven't loved it like others, right? It's a cult classic. And, and I think we've sort of defined that too on a previous yes. Ken cast. And, and I, I'm excited for people to learn more about Mike Barnes, the character. I think Sean Kanan's a fantastic actor. And I'm excited to see how he can give maybe some more nuance to this to the character of Mike, just like Thomas Ian Griffith was able to add some with the excellent writing of, of the Cobra Kai series showrunners uh, to, to, to a new character here, or to the same character that's returning to the, to the universe. So I am excited, man. I, I am beyond excited. So I, I was sort of disappointed to see the picture, but not you right. know it's a conflict right. but i right. i'm pumped to see him back and it, it's just so exciting so <laughs> i'll try not yes. to ramble too much today because i'm so pumped <laughs> uh well you know a lot of people have questions uh about not only mike barnes but the picture itself like they're wondering like ben is he wearing a suit or a gi in this shot wow. and uh to me it looks like he's wearing a black shirt with like a black vest uh, yeah. over that so i don't think he's wearing a gi I don't unless, know. What, what do you see? Drew? Unless he's just so formal that he's created a suit gi. So he's got yeah. both, right? That's that's his, his formal wear for <laughs> that's right. how much into karate he still is. But no, I, I think it looks like a suit. There's like a double breasted button that you that you notice. It's it's like a vest. And uh, you know, where he is, it looks like either in someone's swanky home or a restaurant. I know there was some other photos of some of the other characters at maybe a, a formal dinner. Uh, right. and and it could be certainly that but the lighting is also interesting it looks sort of like a club uh but but mm. i think he's wearing it, it looks like formal wear or formal attire if, if i had to put my put my hand on it right um and then of course it looks like he has a wedding band mm -hmm. so mike barnes this ruthless mercenary who kicked jessica andrews in the stomach has has romanced someone and uh, and married <laughs> <laughs> do you so, think someone convinced him how to settle down you know this this bad boy <laughs> <laughs> right exactly well the question is is he a bad man or a bad husband or a good yeah, there husband? you go i don't know <laughs> I, what do you so i and i know there was a comment up here it's like i i hope they make him a layered character and what do you think looking at this photo do you think he's kind of still in that same mode from karate kid 3 or do you think he's matured it, it's hard to say. I think the the wedding band is is not an accident. I think that that and the fact that that's predominantly and prominently featured in the photo, I'm sure that that's for a reason. Like they want to probably show that. Uh, and, and I think you know the fact that he's in this like weird I don't know restaurant or whatever. And and by the way, I'll say for the record, I haven't really watched any analysis of this stuff outside of uh, I think I had a chance to check out your video because I didn't want to like be sure. biased by anything. Yes. Um, so I'm coming to this with sort of fresh thoughts. So if other people have, have said these things, excuse me. <laughs> but I, I think it would be, you know, interesting to see him as a as a nuanced and, and layered character. And I, I really think that that's what we're gonna get because we've got it for the other characters. Like you don't have Johnny as just like I was just a bad guy, right? He's this gray, morally gray character. Even Daniel's gotten some some gray to him. And and obviously Terry Silver has a lot more backstory too. So I think we can certainly expect that out of right. out of the writing for for the show, which is done well. And they, they've done a great job with it. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh Dylan says he looks like he's in his house. Interesting. Like, yeah, that would be if he's in his house, that would be kind of a, a swank place. It looks like he would have done well for himself. Um, Josh says we want Cheyenne and the jawline guy <laughs> go cool too. That's great. I am so sorry. Who is the jawline guy? <laughs> I don't even know. Anyway, that that's fun. That is funny. Thank you guys. Yeah, that's that would be great. Um, and talking Star Wars says, who's he looking at? Probably silver. Be awesome. It'd be it'd be cool. <laughs> and there's uh, and Kate, good to see you, Kate. Hope he totally despises silver. So there's this idea you know a lot of people assumed at the end of season four and maybe rightly so drew that mike barnes uh would be one of the people that terry silver would call when terry silver said i have a few friends who could help me run cobra kai a lot of people assumed that that would be mike barnes would be one of those people um 
do you think that that would happen? Or do you think that Mike Barnes has kind of gone in a different direction? Or how do you see it playing out? Or is it too soon to tell? I, well, I do think it's too soon to tell, but I have a couple of thoughts on this. And I think it could be one of two things. Uh, you know, there's some comments in here that said that hopefully he despises him, right? The ones that you brought up. I think that could certainly be the case because he did not win the tournament. He did not probably get what Terry had promised him, the 50% stake and, and all that stuff. However, we could also look at it like this, right? Terry won the last tournament. He's got a bunch of dojos now. He's opening it. Hey, Mike, remember that deal that I owed you? Want to mm -hmm. come back? Like that could be another way that that, that that works too because it would be really interesting to say, hey, I got you that stuff that I owed you 30 years ago, whatever oh, it was. Interesting. And, and, it, and it could be a way to get him back. Now, will that work? I don't know. Uh, Barnes might despise him. Uh, I, I also think that it could be really interesting if Barnes just shows up as this like X factor wild card type person that really has no affiliation to anyone. And, and it could be throwing some things into chaos because you've got chosen teaming up with Daniel. You've got Terry running his, his show out in the Valley here. And if Barnes shows up, like whose side is he really even on? He didn't have an affiliation to Terry outside of a financial thing, right? He was, he was hired. <laughs> he right. didn't really like Terry silver. Uh, right. So, you know, from that aspect, it, it could be interesting to see, is he coming back to, to maybe he gets hired again and maybe he, he was hired once he could be hired again. <laughs> so what's the money could be That's, interesting, right? That would be really interesting. And I'm, I'm curious as to, I know we had a, a comment uh, earlier on in the chat talking about like, they want to see a flashback after Karate Kid three. I'm interested to see that too, because yeah, I mean, Terry could have been eh, okay with Mike after that, or he could have been really mad at Mike Barnes because Mike Barnes lost it. You know, he lost to Daniel when Daniel was doing Kata. So maybe that blew up Terry's plans and Terry wouldn't be happy with Mike. Or maybe he realized that Mike did a very good job and did everything that he asked him to do and yeah. would want him to come back, that he's effective. Um, yeah, that's great. I, there was another comment in here somewhere where uh, Barnes might have seen the the, the the TV commercial and right. maybe he sees that and that's what brings him out. It's like, oh my God, I'm going to go get what I'm owed by this guy. This guy yes. owed me so long ago. Yes. I, I think that's another really cool aspect of this, but I, I like the intrigue and the mystery around it. Right. And hopefully yes. the, you know, they're going to give us a picture, which gets us excited. Hopefully they don't reveal it too much because I, I think it would be really cool to just speculate until this comes out. And then you finally find out, like, I hope they don't give that away in the trailer in a way I would, I would like it to be mysterious. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Whatever they can keep mysterious. I'm all for, uh, James, James among 007. Thank you for the $5 super chat guys. I love super chats. They help keep the channel going. They help pay the bills. So thank you so much. James says, Mike will break the bonsai tree growing on Miyagi's grave like he did in Karate Kid 3 as a warning to Daniel. <laughs> and um, that's so interesting because, and I saw a comment earlier. I'm sorry. I can't find it now. But um, basically, could Terry bring back Mike Barnes just to get in Daniel's head? Yeah. He could. I mean, look, Terry, Terry is one of the most cunning and ruthless villains. He's one of the most intelligent villains, obviously, right? We don't have a category for that, but you can say getting a five for his his plan is is certainly why. But I think and, and I think there's a comment in here too about why would he give up 50% just to bring him back? Who's to say that he actually would? He might promise 50% and then screw him out of the deal again. I think Terry is is a complete, complete in control person he knows exactly what he's doing and i want to give him the credit even if he promised him who's to say he's gonna he's gonna follow through again <laughs> so i right. agree he's way smarter right and you know that it would be interesting what would happen mike barnes would probably get very upset if it if it happened again and <laughs> seems like when mike barnes gets angry that's that's a problem too and people have talked about the idea of obviously terry silver fighting chosen but what do you think about this idea of Terry Silver fighting Mike Barnes? Oh, man. I mean, it, it would certainly be interesting. And it, I guess we've never really seen what that might look like outside of just the fan fan speculation and things. I think Terry would win because I just think he'll beat anybody. <laughs> but but I think Barnes will give him a run for his money. I mean, we don't, we don't know what Barnes has been up to. I like to think that he's been practicing, you know, karate. If if unless there's some backstory about him giving it up because he lost. Right. But I, I would love to see that fight. Like we finally got the Johnny versus Terry Silver fight that everyone had probably speculated about for 30 years. It, right. Why not get that one? That would be amazing. <laughs> that right. would be awesome. 
Yeah, that would be absolutely incredible. Ben, good to see you, Ben, says, I can see Terry Silver attempting to clear the air with Mike Barnes like he did with Daniel LaRusso, only to be called out again for manipulation. <laughs> yeah, it's sooner or later, Drew. I mean, a master manipulator is going to get called out, right? Yeah, but they don't care, right? He's just going to continue to manipulate, especially yep. when you have the type of skills that that he has and he's proven it for, for years, whether it's manipulating uh, DAs, manip manipulating, you know, Terry, uh, other people on against him from a karate standpoint or judges he, he's he's a master that's what we can say absolutely uh mac has an interesting point maybe mike works for terry's company so maybe mike never parted ways with terry maybe terry kind of put him in his businesses i hope i'll be honest with you i would like to see them team up again i know that it's been some bad blood and and the way that it, it went down but I would like Mike to be a bad guy. I would like to see him come back and be on Terry's side. I think it would be a lot of fun. Now, I know they're introducing a new sensei for Terry, so maybe that is why they wouldn't do it. But it would be awesome to see them team up again. I would enjoy that. It just, I guess it's, it makes too much sense for him to be mad at him and for him to not want to team up with Terry, but I hope it happens, even though it probably won't. <laughs> right, right. Um Journey to the other side says, who do you think ends up being the final boss of Cobra Kai, Silver or Barnes? <laughs> what do you think, Drew? I mean, it would be really cool if it flipped it on its head and made it Barnes. And, and, and it would be a very like, it's not meta is not the right word, but it would be a very interesting thing for them to do. You think it's Silver and then it, it's actually Barnes. It, it, right. it would be really cool. But as a Terry Silver fan and Terry Silver fan boy, I hope that it's Terry Silver. I, I, I hope he's in it to the end. I just, I don't know that we're going to get that. We have maybe another season or two or maybe more. We'll see. But it would be cool if it was Terry to the end from my perspective. Absolutely. I, I agree as a major Terry Silver fan. Uh, I hope Terry Silver is the big bad of the series. As you said before, I think like, I hope they let him have that. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, Robert says maybe Barnes has some connection with Kreese and now he's loyal to him military perhaps could be now drew if we remember karate kid three um crease actually worked with mike barnes as well he helped train mike barnes for that tournament as well so mike barnes knows crease in addition to terry silver do you think it's possible that whatever crease is dealing with legally right now he might call mike barnes to help go at terry he certainly could, and I think the thing is he he might be able to turn him against Terry because he can say, hey, remember how this guy you know, basically pulled one over on you? Well, he did it to me too, and let's let's team up and, and help me out. And I think that's, that's actually pretty likely because of the fact that they had that connection, but I like to think that Terry might be able to manipulate both of them still, but I think you know Terry is getting kind of cocky here, and he's riding high, so... He, he's maybe due for some comeback from somebody, but I like where you're going with that because I think the fact that they already have that connection, he knows who he is and he had also been, you know, screwed over. I think it's a really good point that you bring up and it, it certainly could happen. I, I could see that very much happening. Right. Well, okay. So if we're talking about karate kid three connections, Drew, I also need to ask you about this. People have brought up snake and Dennis Yes. because if Mike Barnes comes back, does that mean Snake and Dennis might come back too? And we did, guys, if you haven't seen it, I did an interview with William Christopher Ford, uh, who played Dennis in Karate Kid 3, and he didn't really give an answer. I tried to ask him if he's coming back or not. He really <laughs> didn't give an answer. Uh, but do you think that that, it's inevitable drew do you think we will see snake and dennis again we need to like it, it's it, it's a must have and and sensei ford is awesome and i want the interview if you guys haven't watched the interviews yes i agree daniel we absolutely need them if, if you guys haven't watched those interviews go check it out ken and, and, and sensei ford had an awesome conversation it, it was really well done and he gave so much insight into like the the movie the behind the scenes and all that stuff. I'm not sure that we're going to get snake because of some of the stuff that, that he said on, on the chat, but right. if we got Dennis, I would be so happy. Like it would be so cool. Cause I feel like his character didn't get enough like praise. Like I, I know there wasn't a lot to, to the story for him. And I would love to see his character get flushed out a little bit more. How did he get involved there? What was he doing with those guys? And, and you said it in your video, but they were sort of the boss of Mike Barnes in a weird way, right? Mm -hmm. They were they were sort of pulling the strings. Terry had them set up to kind of watch watch Barnes. Barnes mm -hmm. was a mercenary. He was just doing what he was hired to do. Those guys were 
working for Terry too, but they were almost like overlords in a weird way. And I would love to see more of that explored. Yes, absolutely. And it's, it's interesting because you saw at least Dennis, you know, snake was on the sidelines, but Dennis was actually yeah. training Mike Barnes in the Cobra Kai dojo. You could say they were both briefly Cobra Kai students. They were, they were Cobras, you know? And so it'd be great to, to have them back. They belong in a show called Cobra Kai, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> It'd be awesome. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, Kate says, I want to think that Barnes cut out Silver and Crease from his life and moved on with his life for the better. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, again, I agree with you, Drew. It's like, it'd be great to see him fleshed out a bit because we didn't see much, you know, his background or Snake or Dennis's background, but it would be great to see what Mike Barnes is up to beyond being a child mercenary. Yeah, uh, may, maybe a teen mercenary. I should teen say that. Mercenary. Yeah, well, yeah. but I agree with you. It would be awesome. And, and the fact that like so much time has passed, we really don't know. I mean, they could go any direction with him. And, and that's what I think is the most exciting part of a character like him. Yes, he did get screwed over by Terry. OK, there's every motivation in the world to be against Terry. But you could also see it going the other way where it's like, OK, maybe they would team up again. He liked money in the first one. What well, maybe he likes money now? It, right. It's so cool that they've set it up and, and they could really go any direction, which is what's so exciting about it. Right. Yeah. What's the saying? Everyone has a price. Yep. You know, I'm sure <laughs> Terry Silver knows that saying very, very well. Wise man named Ted DiBiase. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yes. I love it. I love it. Love wrestling. Uh, Bryce Productions, Ken Cole. I think if Chosen and Silver fight, Chosen will win and knock down Silver and Chosen turns his back to face Daniel and then silver stabs chosen and kills him. And that <laughs> makes Daniel get Julie. <laughs> oh, oh my man. goodness. That's wild. But the thing is, it's like, I, I just want to reflect on like what a great job, uh, John Hurwitz, Hayden Schlossberg yeah. and Josh healed have done because you could come up with so many different formulations. Anything could happen and, and it could all be organic. You know, it's not like this sort of like inevitable well, it has to go this way. There are so many characters now that have their own agendas and wild cards, including Kim Daun, who we'll get to pretty soon. Um, what does oh, yeah. this mean? Uh, and who will win in fights and who will live and die and all that stuff? Um, if anyone dies, I don't know. Do you do you think anyone's going to die, Drew? I, I know we talked about this, uh, I think, when when or Peter mentioned that uh, from Cobra right. Kai Companion. Shout out to Peter. I don't know if he's still in the chat, but I, I know he had mentioned that about when we were going through those pictures. And, and I... I don't know. It's an interesting show because this show, it toes the line between the comedy and the drama. And I do think that a death is, is it takes it into the, to the more drama side of things. I'm not saying it couldn't happen. I think it certainly could. And it would absolutely raise the stakes, especially somebody like chosen who Daniel finally reconciled with. And, and if, if he's the one that does go out, but I hope, I hope nobody dies. Like, I don't know. I, I think there's certain shows where that works, but this is one where, I mean, I, I, said this to you guys before but i don't need everyone to have a redemption arc and i don't need certain people to die like i, I want terry to be bad i just want him to be bad let him have that and uh even crease like i i get where they're going with crease but i don't really want a redemption arc there either <laughs> i just want to see right. bad guys be bad but i'm a huge villain fan so that that's i mean that's why we got the villain trading cards i guess so exactly yeah I know. I agree with you, Drew. I'm, I'm, I feel the same way. And uh, James says Ted DiBiase's theme fits Terry a hundred percent. Um, Aloha Bama says maybe Barnes became a correction officer after he retired from tournament fighting. Uh, he met crease there. Interesting. That could be cool. That could be really cool. Yes. Um, Melissa asks, do you think that silver could have actually caught Mike at a weak moment? And he uses that to eventually and slowly bring him back with Mike being more willing than silver was in season four. He could. I mean, if anyone can do it, you know, Terry can, he knows how to pull the strings of everybody. And I, I think it's certainly possible. That would be cool. Absolutely. Um, Clifton asks, what if Johnny brings his Cobra Kai buddies back to team, uh, up with him in a future season? There are the other Cobras. I mean, we haven't seen too much of them. I know people want Dutch as well, Dutch. you know, and I, I'd love to see what Dutch would do with Terry Silver. Yeah, it would be awesome. It would be cool. I mean, they, 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 they don't even know about him, so it'd be awesome. I mean, Johnny first got introduced to him and he's like, who's this guy, <laughs> right? right? Little did he know. <laughs> Little did he know. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, now we've been talking about Terry Silver. Let's, let's move on to another shot. So this is another officially released shot. And we see Terry kind of out of focus in the front 
and Tori's kind of coming into the Cobra Kai dojo with her trophy. And uh, Drew, from like a Terry Silver perspective, what, what do you think's going on here? I, I'm, I'm curious to see because we've speculated on how was she going to react to what she found out about him paying off the ref or, or really fixing the tournament. Did he really need to? I, I don't know. She could have won fair and square. And, and the disappointment that she had in that she finally had this thing that she could call her own. She won this tournament. She was really proud of herself as she should be. She fought hard. And then she finds out it's a lie. And, you know, Terry here and, and it, what, what's cool about this shot is it looks like it's in the new dojo. So it, we don't know at what point this happens. Right. He's spending a lot of money on, on these new these new facilities. This could be a situation where she's coming to basically quit or maybe she's coming to confront him. I like to think that he's going to be able to reel her back in no matter how upset she is, because I we talked about him being this manipulator. I do mm -hmm. think that she will confront him about this. And I think she's coming in to just give this trophy back or at least hand this to him and, and confront about what had happened. Uh, but I, I do think he's going to find a way to maybe reel her back in and, and handle it. We'll, we'll see. But I, I think she's, she's coming to do that. So I, I don't know if others have speculated the same. Like I said, I haven't really looked at too much since these came out, but that's where my head's at. Right. Uh, yeah. I love that. It, it's really, it's so interesting um, because uh, you know, I think Peter from Cobra Kai Companion asked, you know, would you be have been happy if Terry Silver stayed as Tofu Terry the whole time? You know, and I said, well, no, you know, because that would, you know, we'd miss him. And yeah. that was Peter's justification for why Chosen should be a bad guy. He wants Chosen to be bad. You know, he, yeah. he likes that. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's interesting. And so do you see Terry in season five, really falling back into Karate Kid 3, Terry? I certainly hope so, man. I really do, because the all the all of the signs are there. He finally got what he wanted. He won. He's got the notoriety. But but it's it's interesting, right? Because this guy's the CEO of a multinational corporation. Like he he's familiar with money, with fame. I mean, he's been all over the world. He's got every riches, every piece of riches you could even imagine. But obviously something's nagging at him and he wants to do what he set out to do with his buddy, John Kreese. So I certainly hope so. I mean, he's talked about opening Cobra Kai dojos all over the valley since 1989 here, and he finally gets to accomplish his dream. So, and I think that there was the tweet from, um, that we reviewed, I think it was uh, last week, right? Where we talked about, Hey, there's a different eighties kind of feel. I think that, 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 also alludes a little bit to maybe what he's going to do and and bringing in all of these other extra senseis and spending all this money and having these giant posters of himself behind behind the wall behind him which i still want to buy by the way i want that on the wall back here <laughs> uh but but i think all that stuff sort of alludes to the maniacal kind of scheming craziness that, that we're going to see from terry I, I certainly hope so put it that way yeah, yeah. And uh, to that point, Talking Star Wars says, I think Terry's going to bribe Tori with mentioning about her mom's illness. That's that's a really interesting point. Aloha Bama says, maybe Terry Silver lied to Tori and said he only tried to rig Robbie's fight. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good one. Josh, I wish to know Ken Cole's opinion about the photo. Terry and Amanda, do you think they are two smartest characters in the Cobra Kai series? Well, why don't, Drew, why don't we yeah. bring up that photo? Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about this, Drew. Uh, what is happening here, and is this a new side of Terry Silver? What What's going on, Drew, as a Terry I, Silver expert? Dude, I love Amanda's like expression here. Like she's she's calling. I don't know what he's offering her a drink, right? And and he's got the 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 just the iconic ponytail pulled back, super tight. We've got it. He's looking good. Thomasine Griffith, awesome actor here, and he's offering her something. Now, she looks obviously skeptical. He is a charismatic person. <laughs> he can manipulate anyone, as we've said. He might have met his match with her. I, I really think that, you know, she... Because they had the interaction between her and, and, and Kreese in the previous season and that, that weird dynamic that they had. I think she sees right through Terry. I mean, she obviously knows. But it would be interesting if he was able to manipulate her because I think she's one of the strongest and smartest characters in the show, to be honest. Mm. And, and I think she's cunning enough to see through some of the lies. Uh, so it would be cool, though, to see them go toe to toe because I think she could really she could handle him, in my opinion. 
Right. Yes. I know a lot of people have really made that point that she is one of the smartest characters in the show. A lot of people say that she's the reason LaRusso Otto is doing yeah. so well. Like Daniel's good too, but she might actually be sort of like the work ethic and business smarts and everything like that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really like what you're saying. And I'm, I'm interested to know what Terry is going to try to do with Amanda. Uh, it looks like he's in full charm mode. Uh, <laughs> I know that this could be kind of dark for Daniel and Amanda's marriage, but do you think he'll try to move in? And Oh, man. I mean, maybe maybe seduce her, or try to romance her, I don't know. Or would he try to kind of scuttle their marriage? You know what? I, I actually would like that because I, <laughs> I, I think <laughs> I never thought that's a great theory because I never thought about it, right? Because Daniel, I mean he gives so much attention to the dojo and there, there seemed to be some tension between him and Amanda in previous seasons. And, and he went off to, to uh, Okinawa to like work on the deal. She was back and there was some, some trouble where she was trying to run everything while he was gone. And, and he does put a lot on her. And, and I know that she's a great partner and, and they're good partners in, in their marriage, but Daniel is kind of distracted by a lot of other things. It would be very Terry esque for him to slip right in there and try to charm her a little bit and maybe manipulate Daniel that way. And, and mm -hmm. it would be, it would be an interesting detour for the show to go that way. Will they do it? I don't know, but I, I would actually really like that. I think it would be awesome. And, and if anyone can, can put the charm on, you know, it's him. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And I know that there's also this idea that uh, Sam at some point might go over to Cobra Kai and it'd be interesting if, Terry can kind of turn everyone against Daniel. And to be honest, look at it from Terry's perspective, guys. I mean, Drew and I are fans of Terry, but look at all the great qualities Terry has. I mean, look at all the money. <laughs> look at all the business skills. I mean, I mean, look at the charm here. Look at that and ponytail. I mean, just look at that. <laughs> yeah. And now this ponytail. Now, Drew, in my opinion, this is like almost a new incarnation of the ponytail. This yeah. almost seems like a, a slightly different style. It looks a little different maybe than season four. It's it's a little bit more business. Uh, it, it's yeah. very it's very it's higher. It's tighter. I feel it's <laughs> it's a little bit more thought out. It's more manicured, and uh, he's got to bring it back because everybody knows. I mean, that's his that's his iconic look. And uh, my one of my favorite pictures in the world is the picture of him standing with the silhouette when they when they unleashed that for season yes. four. I mean, that's just such an iconic look. And uh, you know, I don't know if he's keeping it slicked up anymore. It looks a little drier than usual, I guess. Maybe mm -hmm. that's a different look too. But uh, it, what, a, what an awesome, what an awesome iconic look for for a villain. And I'm so glad that he's back. A hundred percent. I hope he sticks around till the very end of the show. Um, Addy says, I've commented about this pick way before. And I said, I thought this photo was about the dealership. And Terry somehow made a connection with Willie Cole from Karate Kid 3 to the Cole dealerships fascinating i like that idea uh if you're interested in the idea if anyone's interested check out cobra cole uh my uh short film check it down uh in the description uh stars david shatra who plays tom cole of uh, cobra kai and it might answer some of your questions maybe or bring up some new questions for you um daniela says for me there are two terrible things silver can do to declare war to daniel johnny and team miyagi eagle is having the cobra kai kids burn down the Miyagi dojo and beat up Miyagi Fang kids one by one. <laughs> wow. That's yeah. I don't. So Drew, do you think there's going to be a point at which uh, Terry Silver just declares our all out war and just burns everything down? I, he could, but I, I think I don't want to say it's not smart, but I think, you know, when you even talk, think back to when he was, was having dinner with Kreese and when he was trying to talk to him about, hey, you know, you got to be smart about this stuff. You're out here doing all these things. I think there's a lot to the Terry Silver psyche that, that was exposed in that moment. He is a very cunning and 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 like meticulated and, and sort of like a planning type person. So I think if they could push him to the brink of of you know, of that, then I think it would be actually probably better for Daniel and Johnny and, and the, the quote good characters, because I think it would mean Terry's sort of lost it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think he's, he's way more organized and he's way more cunning and, and calculated to maybe do something as uh, maybe just out there like that and, and just put himself out there. I think that's a crease move. And, and we saw that from crease, right? He was out there doing that kind of stuff. And I think Terry sort of talked against that. So he'll be in a bad spot if he's doing something like that, I think. Yes, absolutely. 
And we have Peter Bonasaf from Cobra Kai Companion. He says, talk about the length, the length of the ponytail. Yes. Yeah, it might be a little shorter. It does look shorter. It yeah. does. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, it, Drew, it's, it, I just, it's great. And I know all of you watching are Terry fans too. Isn't it wonderful that we can comment informatively about the length of Terry Silver's ponytail? I just have to say, man, our friend Chris, uh, Chris Maffei, <laughs> a resident Terry Silver enthusiast as well, he, he yeah. said to me a while ago when we saw these pictures, what a time to be alive. And, and that's, I have to shout him out because what a time to be alive, Ken. We're, we're talking about Terry Silver in the year 2022. That's amazing right. to me. Right. And let's let's step back for just a second, because you bring up a great point. Uh, we're talking about Terry Silver and we're talking about Mike Barnes, the return of Mike Barnes. I my thought is that we are seeing a celebrated return of characters that the world, maybe not maybe the right ways they didn't pay much attention to mm -hmm. back in Karate Kid three. So this is an 80s movie um, at the time. It didn't really do as well. But now these characters are returning and they're getting celebrated returns. Yeah. Is this unprecedented uh, in the world of entertainment? It, it kind of is in, in a way because, and, and we've talked about this, you, you get remakes and reboots. This isn't that. This is continuation. And they're doing it in a way that isn't just, oh, well, remember all these old characters? Oh, they're here, but they're only here so you can see the new ones. They weave in and out masterfully the old characters and they give the new characters a reason for existing. It's not like a, a bait and switch, I think, with this show, like others have been. And, and I think that's what's done so well. And we've talked about this at length, but someone like Terry Silver, who was more of a cult classic type villain, is finally getting the, 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 the chance to shine. And I think the actor, Tom Seen Griffith, right, he gets a chance to show Hey man, he did a pretty darn good job back in 89 when he when he filmed this character and people talk about oh the movie was not that great and all that stuff but you can't deny like the 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 presence that he had in that film and I think it's cool to see more of that backstory get flushed out and, and to your point that you just made man like getting to see what Mike Barnes has been up to like who who would have ever thought that we would get that and and especially from like this cult classic movie and it's not just a cop out like it's it's done well like it's done yeah. very well and there's a reason for these people showing up it's not just hey remember this guy remember that guy i think that's what i, I like so much about this show and i think you know i gotta give credit to the writers and the showrunners and people that are doing respect to the show and, and the characters in the universe so right yeah absolutely and mac brings up an interesting point no because they did something similar with star wars but cobra kai does yes. it very well and i think that's a good point although one distinction i would say is that Star Wars has generally been universally loved. Like even the movies that people say they didn't like, they were mm -hmm. exceptionally successful. Um, people went to see them again and again, and they they did really well. That really never happened with Karate Kid 3. You know, it was to the point that when Sony put out the Blu-ray collection of the Karate Kid movies, they only put parts one and two in there, and they left out part three. Yeah. I mean, and so it's amazing to think about that. And now they're like very prominent characters and it's a very important franchise. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've even talked about how like Ralph Ralph and, and some of the other actors from the, the movie when the season four was coming out, they're like, Oh yeah, uh, we're going to correct season uh that, that movie. And I, and I think that was like an interesting thing for fans of karate kid three, where it's almost like disappointing to see someone distance themselves from the work and and there's reasons for that right i'm sure that there's reasons maybe he or some of the actors or people didn't feel like it came out the way they wanted to which is certainly fair but i think you know as a fan of, of the movie i think it's great because you're getting to see some of these people that people never knew about terry silver you might have been a younger viewer or someone who just never watched karate kid and you're watching cobra kai for the first time thinking hey what is this awesome show this is cool oh who's this guy he shows up and now you can go back and discover it and in a weird way it's almost like watching a prequel if you haven't seen that and you get to learn okay where's this guy from what's his deal and and it's kind of exciting for for people that maybe have not been exposed to it so that's exciting as well yes and ben says i love karate kid 3 I've never understood why it gets so much flack. Apparently, Ralph Macchio doesn't even like it, yeah. but I find it as easy to pop and enjoy as much as the original film. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And, you know, it's really, and I'll add that too. Um, you know, we have a comment about Julie Pierce. It's interesting. It's no matter what you think of like the quality, I really feel like there is that consistency of parts one, two, and three. You know, they were largely put together by the same creative teams. 
Um, and I think you can see that once you go to the next Karate Kid, it feels very different. And I've always appreciated that um, those first three movies uh, with Daniel and Miyagi together, uh, they really feel like the same creative team. Same, yeah. It feels like the same creative force. It's cohesive, I think. Yeah, that's it. That's perfect. It's very cohesive. It, it, it's a trilogy, and, and it feels like it from front to back. It, and you, you can pop it in, and then you go one, two, and three, and it feels like a continued story. I, I agree with, definitely agree with you. Now, Dylan, Dylan Gaming says, imagine Terry Silver and Master Kim Taehoon start a relationship. Interesting. Well, we'll be talking about her a little bit again in a, you know, but that kind of brings up, Drew, this new sensei, and we can answer it now or later. But sure. what do you think this relationship is between Terry and this new sensei? I would love to see some some fleshed out backstory to potentially how Cobra Kai was founded a little bit more there. I know you mm. speculated on that. And I think, could she be the descendant of a famous person who is mentioned in one of the other movie in the movies? Right. I think it would be really cool to see her as part of that, but I think it's cool that you're seeing some new blood enter. And I think it's, it's interesting because she seems like his right hand person. And, and ultimately maybe another person that's going to help him maybe the way that Barnes did, but it, it doesn't seem more like a mercenary. It seems more like a true partnership here, especially if she's instructing at the new dojos. So I think seeing her also potentially put Tori through the Quicksilver method is also telling in some of the photos that came out previously. So I'm really excited to see where her character goes. I mean, the actress seems awesome and mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see what she can bring to the table and, and the new character. It's, it's, it's really cool to see some new characters being introduced. A hundred percent. B. Lee says, could it be possible that Mike has kids who are foils of Sam and Anthony? And B. Lee, I think the real answer is that Mike is the father of Sam and Anthony. No, I'm kidding. I, I don't know. But <laughs> that's it's funny when everyone was like speculating how Terry Silver was everyone's father. Yeah. Now, now people are speculating that Mike Barnes is the father of characters on the show. And so do you think, Drew that he is or do you think they're gonna just kind of i hope him? he's not i i think <laughs> you know i think there's a wink and a nod for when they say oh my father and they leave it open-ended because they know that people are going to speculate on it and it, it, look it's fun to speculate on that stuff i'm not taking that away from anybody but i i like when things are just what they are and it doesn't have to be everyone's connected i mean there's certainly a cool thing about certain characters being connected but uh, what is it from Spaceballs where it's like your sister's cousin's roommate or whatever? I'm <laughs> right. thinking of the line. Yes. And I, I would like it if Barnes was just his own person and not trying to connect everybody to everybody. If, if they did, I wouldn't be disappointed. But I kind of hope he's his own own person. It would be kind of better that way, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, Drew, let's move on to this picture. So what hits me the most is that it's kind of crazy to see Daniel flanked by the main and his main antagonist <laughs> from Karate Kid one and two together, you know, in the same thing. And, you know, it's something that I've said before, and I don't know if you feel the same way, but those Karate Kid movies were interesting in that, like how siloed they were mm -hmm. and that like the characters didn't cross over too much. There were only a few characters that were in like all three and most of the characters had no connection with each other, right. and, you know, and chosen and Johnny had no connection with each other. And now they're together again. Yeah. Um, what, what, how does this picture hit you? I, I think, uh, quick says it best in the chat worlds are colliding. And, and I, I think, you know, for me, it's the same thing. I never thought I would see Johnny and Terry silver together, let alone chosen in this. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's the coolest thing. And, and I like how you said it. He's flanked by his two main antagonists. You've got the karate kid one Johnny, and you've got karate kid two, you got chosen. And it's really cool to see how they're bringing them back. And we've said it before and earlier in the show, there's an actual narrative reason for it too, which is cool. It's not just, Hey, let's bring in chosen to the show. He's bringing him in for an actual narrative reason. And the way that they're building it up to saying, Hey, we've got to take out Terry. It's almost like I'll use it to the Marvel cinematic universe. Like Terry is like the Thanos of, of the <laughs> universe. Like they built up to it. They did just right. bring him in in the first, you know, first, episode or of the first season there's a reason why they built up to it so i think you know to see these people on one screen together it's like we were saying before i never thought i would ever see that and as a fan of the franchise and as a fan of the series it's 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 just awesome to see that it's so cool right and uh sam brings up an interesting point there will be a national karate championship in cobra kai well you know it kind of brings up this point because we've had the all valley championship we are going international now 
Daniel has brought in Chosen from Okinawa, and Terry has brought in Sensei Kim Daun from South Korea. So they have brought in international reinforcements. So does that raise the stakes like to a national level at least, do you think? Or do you think it'll still be focused on the Valley? I, I think they're probably going to try to go beyond that because I think especially if they're opening all these dojos, it's like when you start thinking about Little League Baseball and you got this, the whatever Little League World Series and all that stuff, I do think they're going to have to up the stakes and it's going to have to be bigger. And that's maybe who these people are behind them. You know, Maybe they're investors, maybe they're other officials or something. I, I don't know. But it would be cool to see it up bigger and and more broad especially since you've got terry silver involved who's got a ton of money himself and he might even sponsor the thing i mean we've seen he was the sponsor went in karate kid three he's given the speech this is a, this amazing person terry mm -hmm. silver he's you know is a, yes. a philanthropist and everything <laughs> so maybe he's gonna use his reputation um and and his his fame to maybe bring it to a more national level which would be a very Tilver, terry silver thing as thing to do <laughs> so Right, right. Well, now, okay, so we're going from that backyard to inside yeah. the LaRusso home. And here we have Amanda and Carmen, and they look concerned. Do you, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. I, it, it like could be an important moment in the show, or it might be just a brief moment. I, I can't tell. Yeah, they're dressed up, right? So there's something formal going on, whether it was maybe a dinner or they got back from a dinner or maybe they were hosting the dinner. We've seen Daniel and Johnny more friendly. They're obviously teamed up here and, and Carmen and Amanda know each other now and there was the, the dates and all that stuff. They definitely look concerned. So whether it's someone's hurt or something's happening at the house, uh, it certainly seems like an important moment. I don't know why they would just kind of throw this out there if it wasn't something that we would probably see called back to later. But I, I think it's cool to see them together again. It means that Daniel and Johnny are still, you know, connected in, in a way, and, and maybe they're getting together as a family. But it could be Terry Silver breaking into their house. I mean, right. I don't know. It would be interesting. I, I'm not sure like what the context of this is. I haven't seen again. I haven't seen a lot of speculation. Like, what are other people saying about this moment? Is is this something like that? Is it maybe a lesser moment? I'm just curious what your perspective is. Well, let's see. We've got James says maybe they're at their same party as Amanda and Terry were. Uh, Jeremy says Amanda's on the phone, so something must be happening. Mm -hmm. um, what if somebody fighting or something like that? Um, my thought is we have seen Terry's steam room is. Is that in his, his new house? Because mm -hmm. I don't think he's in the Ennis house unless they show that again, which I hope. I hope so. Or is he in the steam room at the country club? I don't know. It, it, you're right. There is a lot of high society type moments, which is which is interesting. I'm yes. curious to see. Uh, Aloha Bama asked, do you two gentlemen believe Barnes has been training and fighting successfully in national tournaments? If he never stopped, he might be the strongest. Yeah, that would be an awesome angle for them to take because they could go the opposite way where it's, oh, I'm giving up karate because I'm ashamed of what happened, or he could have used it to make himself stronger. And it seems like a very much a Mike Barnes thing to do based on what we know his character is. He's a very tough guy. Yes, he was a mercenary, but he was karate's bad boy. He, he, he's he got his face on a magazine. <laughs> so right. I like to think that he kept training. I, I like that idea. Right. And I mean, if we think about it, we saw Terry in Vietnam, you know, who would, who would have been old. Old, he would have been older than Mike Barnes in Karate Kid 3. And we just saw how good Mike Barnes was in Karate Kid 3 when he was very young. He was just off to an amazing start. Mm -hmm. And if he kept that going, I mean, he could be... It's like a prodigy. <laughs> yeah, he is a prodigy. And, you know, it's controversial, but, you know, I'd even say that Mike Barnes may have been better than Chosen uh, back in the day. And if that's the case, he could be the strongest among Daniel's generation. Yeah. Uh, if maybe excluding Sensei Kim Daun, we don't know yep. much about her. But um, I have think? to, I have to dock, I have to dock Barnes a point for getting distracted by the kata. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say that <laughs> good, yeah. he's weak because of it, but he does lose a point, in my opinion, because he looked so confused while that was going on. And I, I mean, I get it; he's throwing him off, but at the same time, come on, man! Like, <laughs> you got, you got... talked about Mike Barnes a bit, but. Uh, what else can we say? We mentioned the wedding ring. We saw that he is not dressed in a gi. He's dressed in a black shirt and vest. We thought that it, it could be at a restaurant or a club, or some people thought it could be as his house. He's what if, angry. What if this is at like, and maybe this is going to be out of left field, but what if this is like the lobby at one of the Cobra Kai dojos, you know, because mm. like it's not out of Terry Silver's 
MO to create this swanky looking lobby. Like, what are those things in the back? Are those lanterns or something? It's, right. it's like these blue, or unless it's drinks. And there's definitely, I mean, it's probably a restaurant if, if I'm being honest, but I would love this if this was like at the dojo and he's there. And that's just Terry's, Terry's way that he's getting people in. And there's like a coat rack in the back or something. It, it, I mean, he looks angry as hell. I mean, right. he looks very angry. <laughs> hey, Drew, I have a wild thought. Yeah. And you can tell me this is absolutely ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> is it possible that this scene here is in the Ennis house? Oh my God. It would be amazing. It, could, could that be inside the Ennis house? We need to see that again. Even if they just gave us some shots of the outside and like did something else inside, give us the outside shots and let us pretend that we're in there at least. <laughs> no. And, and there's right. a lot of great comments here saying that there's somebody's shoulders here, whether that's Terry's shoulder oh. or not. It's like a, black like line in the bottom corner is that terry silver in a black suit i don't know there's a lot of a lot of great comments here speculating in that and yes. certainly could be i mean it could be anyone really but it's it looks like a black suit and that's that is terry's style so mm -hmm. it would be interesting to see him come at him i like to think you know think about how terry got introduced in in season four they pulled a fast one on us and they, and they gave him some nuance and and they made us think like, oh, this guy's Tofu Terry now. And whether he was manipulating or plotting the whole time, I don't know. I like to think that we're going to get something similar with Barnes. What we see right away isn't going to maybe be what we get. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some, I don't want to say a bait and switch, but if there was some, a little bit nuanced to, to what we get and it's a little bit different by the end of the season. It, it would be interesting to see if they do something like that with his character. And maybe this plays into that. Right. Now, Drew, I, I have another crazy idea. Uh, we're talking about that shoulder in the shot right now. Is it possible in any universe, in any multiverse, that he is facing off against Jessica Andrews? She has <laughs> trained her entire life, and she is getting revenge on Mike Barnes for kicking her in the stomach. <laughs> I think it would be cool. Look, if anyone's coming back from Karate Kid 3, I would like to see her back because I think, you know, they yes. could they could do some retribution there for what he did to her. Although you, you pointed out in your video, he, he didn't seem like he wanted to kick her. Like he thought about it and I right. think he thought about his training and then it's like, oh, yeah, I have to like fight her because I'm bad. Like, <laughs> I'm hired to do this. So I've got to kick her. Whether he should have kicked her in the stomach or not, I don't know. But it was a brutal kick. But yes. I guess that's what a mercenary does. He's hired for a job and he's got to take them all out. Yep, exactly. I think that's a great point. Uh, and Mark says, yes, and perhaps Terry's purchased another Frank Lloyd Wright mansion as well. Yeah, there there are actually a number of them here around L.A. So you never know. Maybe he kind of hopped to new mansions. Um, so, Drew, do you, looking at this photo, do you feel like is there any other information in here? I I think that, you know, the suit says something because like you said before, we're seeing a lot of people in formal wear and they released all these pictures kind of at the same time. So I don't know that they would do that for a reason or for no reason. I think what, what you see is they're trying to let us speculate. Like we're doing it right now. They want us breaking these things down. And, and I think there's probably a connection between all of these people in formal wear. I think there's probably at the same event or maybe somewhere connected to one of those events and i think that, that that was done for a reason i think the the suit says a lot and i actually i think it's a pretty awesome suit <laughs> like I, yeah, yeah he looks is, good right i mean yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like maybe maybe terry gave it to him maybe terry helped him dress because it looks kind of like what terry's wearing too so uh i think i think for me like I'm just so excited to see where they are and what is the context of this and, and why is he fighting whoever he's fighting? I, I think the speculation of whether he's good or bad is going to be a lot of fun all the way up till the release of this thing, because yeah. maybe he's neither. Like we've said that in the mm -hmm. beginning of this, maybe he's not on anyone's side. He's just coming back because he wants to get what he's owed or somehow he gets roped into this thing. I, I, I kind of hope he's against Daniel and Johnny. It would be fun. Give Terry some more ammo and firepower. Right. Yeah, I, I'm kind of digging that idea of him being kind of like rogue or being just for himself and just forming allies as he sees fit, you know? Or chaos. And yeah, exactly. Uh, regarding the theory about Jessica Andrews facing off against Mike Barnes, Lindsay says, LOL, please, <laughs> she will dump mac and cheese on him. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot can happen in 35 years. You know, she her mac and cheese skills might have 
gotten a lot better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> see what else? Uh, Sasha says, or maybe Mike Barnes is independently wealthy. He had negotiating skills. I mean, he he somehow figured out how to get Terry into 50%, whether Terry was actually going to give it to him or not. I mean, he had the guts to go up against the CEO of Dynatox. So I got to give him credit. I mean, he seemed like he knew what he was doing. <laughs> he, he was an entrepreneur and that he accepted the offer to come out and do that too. He was willing right. to take that money. So I, I think it's certainly possible for sure. Absolutely. Uh, Clifton says Barnes has his own dojo. M maybe so. That would be cool too. I like that. <laughs> Maybe so. Ben says, Daniel Russo's winning Karate Kid 3 deserves an asterisk, even yes. if he did get the fair point in overtime because he didn't have to fight multiple matches like Mike Barnes did before the finals match. I agree with you, Ben, 100%. <laughs> Justice for Mike Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Barnes, he was he was excellent. I think people don't give him enough credit. Uh, he was very good, very good at his job. Um, and guys, you know, we will come back to that shot again. We'll, we'll we'll go ahead to other shots and we'll think about them. And then we'll return to Mike Barnes and see if we can think of anything else. Um, so, Drew, we have this new shot. This is um, the students, uh, Miyagi-Do, Eagle Fang have combined. It looks like they're, they're bowing. Um, does this hit you as interesting? Yeah. Um, go ahead. I was just going to say, where's Miguel? And, that, mm. and that's what I thought of immediately when I saw this. And Robbie's back here too. And you've yeah. got Daniel's son. So it, it's clearly they're all training together. And you still see Sam here, which is interesting. So mm -hmm. at what point does this happen? And I like that you got Hawk in the middle. It's almost like he's taking like a leadership type role here. And yes. I think that's awesome, right? He, he won and, and, and he's flying high. But I, I wonder where Miguel is. Is this when he's in Mexico? But I, because Robbie's here. So the timeline's kind of interesting. Um, who are they bowing to is the other question. Uh, it's probably, mm. maybe this is when they bring in Chosen. I don't know. And maybe that's what those people are standing there for. Yes. But I, I think it's really interesting that you've got Robbie and, and Anthony here and you've got no Miguel. Where is he at? That's the biggest question that I have. Right. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting question. Now, do you think Miguel, you know, when I was talking with uh, Peter, a Cobra Kai companion podcast, and, you know, it seems like every time we've seen Miguel in any of the promotional material for season five, after he gets back from Mexico, he seems to have kind of a bad attitude. He seems mm -hmm. to be a bit negative and, or he's fighting too against Robbie or they're having disagreements. Um, so is it possible that Miguel could go to Cobra Kai? Yeah, I, I certainly think so. I think with the dynamic between him and Johnny and the way that, that, that went down and, and, and a lot of different things going on, he was trying to find, his dad, whatever happens with his dad. I mean, we don't, we haven't gotten a lot of that outside of a little bit of the teaser piece that we saw that could certainly set him off and maybe send him down a path. Maybe he walks away completely and, and we don't see him on either side. And maybe he says, look, like I just kind of need to be by myself. Um, I'm curious what that's going to do with the, the Sam and, and Tori triangle as well. And, and is that going to affect the, the Robbie piece? But I, I think that there's certainly a scenario where maybe he walks away completely for a bit and says you know what i need a break from everybody and and he's sort of like just affected by whatever may have happened down in mexico and and the thing with with johnny as well interesting so if he goes rogue if miguel goes rogue alan says mike barnes trains miguel that would be awesome i would like that hey what a lot of people have been suggesting is mike barnes miguel's father there you go <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know but i i agree i think Hopefully they keep everyone, everyone separate. And if they don't, if Mike Barnes is related to someone, I know they'll do it in a good way, but you know, yeah. hopefully they'll, they'll kind of keep that separate. Um, oh, someone brings up, uh, Bert, where's Bert justice for Bert. That's a, that's a good point. What happened to Bert? Um, yeah, yeah no. he's not in this shot. So somebody's behind Hawk. I don't know who that is. Like, I can't, I, I can't tell by the shoes, like it's vans. Right. But I, I don't know who that mm. is. It's hard to see. Yeah, that's a good point. I would think if it's Miguel, because he's reasonably tall, I would think we would see more of him. Like it, if he was truly back there, it seemed like we'd see like his hair or something behind mm -hmm. Eli slash Hawk if Miguel was back there. Yeah. Um, so Peter, I think from Cobra Kai Companion mentioned it could be one of the newer characters that we saw in season four, mm -hmm. um, which, which is possible too. I don't know. You're right. It's a mystery. We we don't we don't know who that is. Yeah. Um. 
Robana, thank you for the super chat. Uh, guys, we love super chats. They help uh, pay the bills uh, and help support this channel. So thank you so much, Robana. Perhaps Mike is married to Julie, Julie Pierce from Next Karate Kid. He could be. I mean, if that's the case, that's an easy way to get Julie yeah. back in the show. Yeah. We, we, we need Michael Ironside back here, too, in some capacity. So. <laughs> uh, a hundred percent. Okay. This is my wish. Anyone watching right now, or just, I'm sending this out to the universe <laughs> it's at all possible to get Michael Ironside back into the Miyagi verse. That would be insane. My yeah. number one wish, my number one wish is to have a scene with Martin Cove, Thomas Ian Griffith and Michael Ironside in the same scene, preferably squaring off. Anyway, that would be awesome. Yeah. I just, I, just, <laughs> I felt I needed to get that out there. <laughs> Um, let's see. What do you think about a Mike Barnes versus Johnny fight? Because people have compared Mike Barnes and Johnny endlessly, you know, as the main teen antagonist from Karate Kid one and Karate Kid three and who would win that type of thing. Do you think we're going to get that fight? I, it depends on how they bring in Barnes, right? Because if he's on the Terry side, then, then sure. But I, I think that, man, I, I would like to watch it. Obviously, right. I would like to see that. It's going to just be really interesting. And and the other thing that I've been thinking about as we've been talking about these guys fighting is what if this is, what if Barnes isn't in it much? And, and what if he's just sort of in the end or something? Because maybe like as people have speculated, what if they're just setting up for the final season or the, or the next season? Hopefully it's not the final season, but maybe they're sort of setting that up. Like maybe he won't have a huge role. I think we all want him to, and, and it would be great, right. but maybe it's more like, I don't know, set up for, for something further. It would be kind of interesting. Uh, you know, I'll say this. I think they also do a good job of balancing the amount of characters. We've talked about the show is kind of short. It's like a 30-minute show or on average. Yes. I know certain episodes are a little more or a little less. There is going to be some trouble that they're going to have to try to balance everybody moving forward when you have all of these characters. I think you saw it a little bit last season. and I, I thought they did it well, but some of the newer characters maybe didn't get as much screen time or you didn't get as much to, to flesh out some of the backstory that you might want. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to complain about more episodes or more time, but I do wish this show was an hour, especially now that they're bringing in some of these legacy characters that you want to see more of. Uh, yes. But I guess it's best to like leave people wanting more versus giving them too much. But I don't think an hour would, would be a bad thing for this show. I would love to see that change if they could. I 100% agree. And uh, if they can't do that for whatever reason, I'd, I'd love to see spinoffs. I don't yeah. know if it's possible, but I'd love more attention being paid to some of these sure. characters and spinoffs. I guess we'll see what happens. Um, Melissa asked, do you think that the reason Amanda looks like that is because she could be talking to Daniel when she sees Barnes image setting fire to the house with her and Carmen inside? <laughs> wow, Melissa, that's epic. Well, whoa. I hope Snake and Dennis are there if they're doing that. You know, get the right. get the three the three amigos back together. <laughs> that yes, that that would be crazy. Um, it's interesting. That seems people seem to have this thing they're coming back to this idea of burning down the house or burning down Miyagi Do. Um, and gasoline. Maybe, maybe gasoline fire. Maybe it's you know told you not to play with fire. Maybe it's Terry Silver's line, but people are thinking that things are going to burn down. Yeah. It certainly could be. I, I I think that the undoing of of Terry is going to be the crease thing, and I just think that that even even when you and I was thinking about this when we were talking about Tori, so Tori and Crease built a relationship, and and Crease really took her under his wing, and and he had a soft spot for her, and I think that you know we talk about Tori finding out about fixing the tournament. I think that's one thing, but if she finds out what Terry did to Crease. I think that might be the thing that maybe sets her off the edge. And and I think that's going to be Terry's undoing potentially because he's he's putting too much out there and and maybe like he's pissing off too many people to the point where they're all teaming up. I mean, he is sort of like a supervillain. So right, you right. kind of need all of the manpower and the and the and the people power to to go after him. But I think that that's probably going to play just as big of a role as the cheating thing if she were to find that out, because I think she has that respect for him because he tried to help her out, especially with the super and all that other stuff. Right. Yeah. That's a really excellent point. You know, um, yeah, crease, he, you know, not so great a guy, but he's done a good job at forming some, some bonds, some relationships mm -hmm. with people. Um, yeah, maybe Terry doesn't really engender that type of loyalty. Yeah. You know, um, 
a couple points uh, on what you were saying, Drew. What if Barnes isn't in it a lot in season five, but in season six, he becomes the big bad with Terry going away for a while. Yeah. And David said, no, Sean Kanan will have a prominent role in the season. The question will be which episode he shows up in. I certainly hope so. I mean, I definitely hope so, David. I agree with you. Like, I, I'm crossing my fingers <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, it's like, and the thing I love is that if you're bringing Barnes back, that automatically brings up all that backstory with Terry Silver. Mm -hmm. So I think it continues to make Terry so relevant and tied into everything that's going on now. Um, so that gives me hope that Terry will stick around for the rest of the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we have got a super chat. Thank you, uh, JG Gaming. Uh, season five, Barnes takes over. Terry Jail? <laughs> Interesting. He's been able, Terry's been able to dodge jail for a long time, Drew. He really has. I mean, he even got redemption for all of whatever he did with the All Valley. I mean, we saw the newspaper article on the iPad in the in the one scene, and and all the stuff that he's been doing to the environment. I mean, he you know he's got this <laughs> this image of this <laughs> right. environmentalist. Meanwhile, he's doxing or uh, do, uh, dumping toxic waste in Borneo and <laughs> all this other stuff that he's doing. We don't even know what else he's doing. I mean, how many other businesses does he have that he's manipulating people? So I hope we get more of that too. I want more Terry backstory. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I want to know what happened to Dynatox. Um, JG Gaming, thank you so much for the super chat, guys. Love super chats; they help support the channel. Thank you so much. Um, okay, let's jump into. Here's another picture. Now, maybe we won't spend too, too much time on this because this is we already saw this in the trailer. Um, you know. We've got Kenny front and center. He looks like he's the new breakout star maybe for the Terry's Cobra Kai dojo. Yeah, I, I like him. I like the character of him. I like that. That's one of the things where we talk about having longer episodes. I wish he like they were trying to balance his stories, a new character they're introducing. They're trying to balance that with all the other stuff. I hope we get more Kenny because because I really like him. And I think Dallas uh, Dupree Young is, is a good actor, too. And I thought he did a nice job with the character. It's cool to see the nuance there and why he's going to Cobra Kai with the situation and the fact that his brother uh, was, you know, in juvie and all of that. I, I think that's a cool concept that I hope they build out a little bit more. Yeah, because he did such a good job. He was so sympathetic. You really felt for him the whole series. And he does this amazing heel turn at the end. Yeah. And it's uh, he's kind of ferocious, you know, it's awesome. really, yeah, he did. He did a really fantastic job. Um, okay. So here's a shot of Miguel, Robbie and a lifeguard at some sort of pool water park type thing. Uh, and it, it seems I'm sensing a little negativity, Drew. What, what do you think? I, yeah, there's, there's like a lot of pictures of them like arguing. It looks like that lifeguard is, is trying to break up maybe an argument or something, or there was some type of disagreement. I don't know. I mean, this is a very eighties thing, right? Go to a water park. And I, and I like that, that that's, what's fun about this, but I, I'm very curious the context of this. And at what point is it, is it taking place? Because, they're clearly in some type of spat and, they, and they've shown it in some of the pictures. And I think we saw a little bit of it, like there's a parking lot fight or something too, or, or something. I, I think it's interesting to see, but clearly there's some disagreement and I'm curious to see what it's actually over. <laughs> Is right. it over the girls? Is it over the fact that they're trying to get Johnny's approval? Uh, I, I really don't know. It's, it could be good. It could go either way. Right. Because you'd think that if Robbie is teaming up with, his dad Johnny to go and get Miguel. Mm -hmm. I think they look at it as maybe rescuing Miguel. Um, is it something new that happened during the course of all that? Like, is this not related to, you know, the romance, the love triangle, like all that kind of stuff? Um, is this something new that happens in Mexico that's kind of reigniting this yeah. rivalry? Yeah, it certainly could be. I I, I think there's going to be. I, we've said this before, but I hope that the Mexico storyline isn't too long. I don't think it will be. I mean, I think it's a detour and all that, and it's fine that it has to happen and all that. But I hope that whatever happens there sort of brings it back to the valley because I I think it could go on for too long, and I think it'll take us away from what's going on here. I hope it builds the characters and and it gives us a little bit more nuance into maybe their relationships, adds a little bit of conflict, but then maybe they bring it back, and that's what's going on at this water park here. Right. Well, Drew, do you know who they're going to find in Mexico? Who? <laughs> Mike Barnes. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> well, he's his I'm dad, just, you know? <laughs> right, he's his dad, right? No, we're, we're kidding, guys. His but dad's actually, cousin's roommate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, JG Gaming, watch Barnes come in on episode one. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, 
Muhammad, thank you so much for the super chat, guys. Super chats are great. They really help support the channel. Thank you so much, Muhammad. I really appreciate it. Um, oh, let's go. Lindsay says, this is not where I pictured Miguel going to some resort. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Like, could this be a Mexico? Could this be a Mexican resort? I, I think it's back in California. I it think it's like you, a water park. Yeah. 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 Uh, some kind of water park and they're back. So at least, you know, Miguel makes it back safely. You know, that's something that we know. Okay, Drew, now we get into some interesting stuff here. There we go. This is Sensei Kim Daun. Okay. Yep. And we'll get clarification on how we exactly pronounce her name once the series uh, commences, so the season commences. But um, what are your thoughts about this picture? I like the way that she's front and center. I think she looks badass, to quote Johnny. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. And I like, like, if you look at the student on the right hand side, she looks almost like like she's revering her or something like, oh my gosh, like, you know, she right. looks very powerful. And, I, and I'm just so excited to see a character like this that could have a connection to something back from the original Karate Kid series that would, would maybe give us a little bit more backstory about potentially about how did Cobra Kai start. But it also gives Terry Silver someone else that's in his arsenal and someone that's going to help maybe enact his plan and teach these these students the Quicksilver method like we saw in some of the other pictures. So I'm excited to see where they take this character and uh, introducing some new people. It's it's really exciting, in my opinion. Right. And then, of course, there's like that whole connection. I hope I hope it happens is that if she's Kim Daun, she could be related to Kim Sun Young. Yeah. Who may have been the master who taught terry silver and john crease and maybe the originator of the cobra kai fighting style yeah. so this could be a very dangerous person not not only for her enemies but maybe even for terry silver yeah. like he's got to be careful oh i i agree because maybe he's playing with fire too and mm -hmm. and maybe he doesn't know because could she eventually take over and could she do something i mean didn't um didn't the actress alicia hannah kim she posted something i think there was like a tweet uh after one of the showrunners had tweeted something about like oh you don't even know it's about to get crazy and i think yeah. that alludes to maybe the importance and the prominence that her character might have in, in the show which is which is kind of interesting i mean she looks badass and i'm excited to see where they're going to take her yes and actually uh, i know the tweet you're talking about um she is teasing some serious stuff look look at what happened i think this was yesterday the day before they did an article and in the article they said kim however this is sensei kim has already been revealed to be part of terry's expansion of the cobra kai dojo <laughs> and this is her uh, the actress underlining she bad <laughs> 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 which uh if you've seen the thumbnail and i say he bad about mike barnes this is yeah. the inspiration is this uh and i just think that's so hilarious that's a hilarious sentence that's awesome and but i mean if that's true drew then she's man she could be the most dangerous person on the show have you ever like wanted the bad i mean i i know i'm not alone in this but i might be in the minority on this but like have you ever wanted the bad guys to just win so badly like yeah I don't, I don't know i just i want them to win because i i just like terry silver and i think that you know she seems awesome too and there's something about it where in a show where things aren't black and white yes he's the bad guy but he has motivations too i mean we started to see reasons why and, and hopefully we get some backstory about her and and who she is because I think it could be a really cool addition to the cast and and to really just what Cobra Kai is because it's always been John Kreese and John Kreese and John Kreese and then you got Johnny and those guys and then you had Silver but this if this if she has some connection to the original Cobra Kai fighting style or something it would be such a cool way to build out the backstory and the history of of maybe that that karate style and 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 I really just the fierceness of what Cobra Kai stands for it would be really yes. cool oh 100% and it's interesting if you look in the on the back wall, some other people have pointed that out. If you zoom in, mm -hmm. that's like a poster of different snakes or cobras like on the wall. And, you know, we saw obviously Kreese fight over a pit of snakes in Vietnam. But, you know, it's possible that really it's Master Kim and maybe Sensei Kim here who really developed fighting techniques based on the cobra. Oh, you yeah. know, and so, yeah, this this could be very interesting and drew i just have to take a second i don't know if any of you guys have seen the movie dodgeball with uh, vince <laughs> Vaughn and ben stiller oh did yeah. you did you know initially that movie ben stiller plays the bad guy um the bad guys won ben stiller wins and then the credits rolled 
I did like, that was the original that. engine ending. Yes. But, I wouldn't but have no been upset it. with that. I would have liked yeah. that. I, you know, white Goodman, if, if, if the character from that movie <laughs> is so reminiscent of the character, Tony Perkis from the movie heavyweights, which is sort of like, it's, it's I, I always thought of like dodgeball as like this spiritual successor to that, but I did not know that. And that's yes. awesome. <laughs> you can watch it. You, you can watch that original ending. And I think that's cool. Uh, ben Stiller was all about it, but they tested it and it just didn't work well. So they actually, shot the ending where ben stiller loses so oh, i wish he won <laughs> yes i know i i totally agree uh jg gaming thank you again for the super chat guys that helps support the channel thank you so much uh he says backstory barnes after his loss in karate kid 3 yeah this is a great point drew i mean the idea of having a flashback and explaining what happened because anything could happen i mean he he lost and mm -hmm. was accused, at least by the All Valley Tournament in season one, of unethical behavior. Yeah. yeah. Which, I mean, did that ruin his fighting career? Or? Well, that That's, I think, the biggest the biggest piece of speculation because the All Valley Tournament, I mean, it had to be news that he was going to compete. I mean, he he's on a magazine cover and, and he's not some nobody. Like, he, he was a very famous fighter and he was this up-and-coming star, uh, the karate's bad boy, as, as they say. So there's got to be some aspect of that all valley tarnishing his reputation and and maybe that's where he's enraged because it ruined his career and and maybe he will blame terry silver and, and john crease for that because it took away from what he could have done and he got paid for it right so it wasn't like he had some connection i mean he took a job and this job ruined his life potentially so it, it could be really interesting if they go with that angle. I, I, I hope we get some sort of flashback or at least some sort of connection. I can see maybe a monologue of his character confronting one of them. If we don't get a flashback, flashback, they'll probably do that to flesh out the story. But I love the idea that maybe he had to step away from karate because he got banned. I mean, maybe he wasn't allowed to compete at a national level anymore. That would be a really interesting angle for them to take. Yeah, and that would really set up a, a conflict uh, with Terry Silver. You yeah, know, he just even if like Terry approaches him with money, I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. He might take the offer and then look to sabotage Terry, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, assuming Terry has a weakness. And, and there's an interesting discussion. Terry Johnson says Terry admits he has a weakness. He never denies that. Yeah. Only Crease denied a weakness. Yeah. Now, this is interesting because maybe Terry Silver is somewhere on the psychopath scale. Maybe he's definitely a narcissist. But I think. Terry Silver saying he has a weakness, but his weakness is someone else. <laughs> like that's <laughs> classic. That is wonderful. So to me, that's almost saying you don't have a weakness. Yeah. Like is, is that no, 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 there's nothing about me. It's, it's you, you know, you need to go away. And um, yeah. so I, I think that's, that's funny. And then <laughs> surround says, could extreme overconfidence be a weakness? Silver has that in spades. Could be. He does. He does. Uh, it's it's almost a strength in a way too because he's so extremely overconfident like whereas other people might think well i don't know if i could do that like he has no doubt like he could do whatever he wants and it definitely could be a weakness for sure but at the same time it's also a strength in a weird way <laughs> right so you rated i mean we rated terry silver but like as a terry silver expert externally assessing yeah. him drew what <laughs> is terry silver's weakness I mean, he said, I would say maybe the overconfidence, it could be, but you also, you also mentioned, I mean, his weakness was crease. He admitted it himself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I think maybe a weakness is that he thinks he can buy off everybody. There's going to be somebody with some mm -hmm. type of moral and maybe it's going to be Tori. Maybe Tori will be the person that ultimately brings him down somehow. And it would be a good redemption arc for her. Everyone wants it to be crease and it's going to be crease taking him out. I actually think it's going to be someone else. It'll probably be somebody like Tori, but I think his his ability to just think that he can continue and it ties back into what Surround said about the 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 overconfidence. I think is it probably is his biggest weakness and right. and the payments because eventually somebody will flip on you, right? Yes, <laughs> eventually. Yes, indeed. indeed. Daniela asks, "What will happen if Terry's bribe scheme is exposed? Yeah. Will there be a rematch tournament or a dojo fight between Cobra Kai and Team Miyagi Fang in season five? That it's it's interesting. Here, here's the thing that's interesting is they honestly had like a type of gentleman's agreement, and the agreement was technically between Johnny Daniel and Crease. Mm -hmm. Um, if it gets out that 
that Terry cheated, that gentleman's agreement goes away, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, I have doubts that they're even going to honor it anyway, because I think right. they'll get around it and say, oh, well, Chosen opened a dojo or something like that, potentially. I mean, we don't know. But I do agree with you. If that gets out, it sort of invalidates what was agreed upon. And I just, I wonder, could they ever really prove it? Like, could they prove it? They could, I guess. But have, I don't know. Maybe the ref would have to come out and say, look, yes, it happened. Here's my bank statement. Yeah. Look at that money. That's from silver. That'd be yeah. probably the only way. I, I still question, like, I'm not saying that Tory couldn't have won. But I don't know why Terry felt like he had to do that, and 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 I think they could have just won anyway. I guess he wanted no he wanted no chance of losing, and that's right. probably what it was. He didn't want to go into what it was before, like back in '89. Right, and now God of Mischief brought, brings up an interesting point. I think Terry's yeah. weakness is also his PS, PTSD from Vietnam. So he did have all those experiences in in Vietnam as well. In another video, I kind of looked at everything that we knew so far about Terry Silver. And my idea of what his weakness is, is that he always needs to feel in control. And in, if he's ever in a situation where he's not in control, yeah, he, he gets angry, he gets emotional and um, he, he kind of loses it. And I think that that could be a weakness if he feels like he's not in control, because that goes right to your point, Drew, about why did he need to pay off the ref? Well, he needed absolute control. Yep. I, I would think that that would be one thing. And so I think that's a really good point. Really good point. Yeah. And so I don't know, maybe, maybe that's another thing, uh, you know, that someone could exploit is making him feel like he's not in control anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Because, I mean, someone that is a narcissist and somebody that is potentially a psychopath, as you've speculated <laughs> on very well, he does he does need that. And I, I think maybe Tori will take it as, well, he didn't trust me to win. And that's that's a whole other thing that we could we could talk about some other time. But right. I do think that that might be his undoing. And you're right, his, his absolute need for control, uh, just the way that he has to control every situation. So... I mean, I like it. I'm a fan of it. So yes. <laughs> he can control those situations because I, I like it. <laughs> yeah. He does it so well. Yeah. Yeah. He does. It's, it's so much fun to watch. Um, he's always 10 steps ahead of you. It's great. I love it. Um, here's the, uh, oh, it's actually not the last picture, but um, so we have a shot here of Devin who was with Eagle Fang. She's now with Cobra Kai and she's training with Tori and Drew. A lot of people are wondering why is she with Cobra Kai? Did she choose to go there? Is she a spy, a mole, trying to figure out what they're doing over there? What do you think? Because Devin seemed like a positive person. She did, but I think she also likes like maybe the organization. Like she seemed like she wanted like an actual operation, and and maybe I don't know what's going on at at Miyagi Eagle Fang, and maybe it was too amateur for her or something. I don't know. Uh, but I do think that maybe Terry could manipulate her and maybe tell her like, "Hey, I'm going to teach you how to be even better." It, I like the idea of her being a spy because I think it's in her character. Like she seemed to have a good rapport with them. I mean, she was kind of a natural, she was a natural student uh, and, and she did well and it seemed like she built some good relationships. So I'm going to go with you guys and, and, and think that she's maybe a spy or something. Cause I, I think it would be interesting for her to, to, to really just flip like that, like that heel turn. It doesn't, I mean, we don't know that much about her character, but it doesn't right. seem in line with who she would be. So, right, right. Yeah, that, that would be so fascinating. Um, so maybe some unseen corrosion mm -hmm. from the inside in Cobra Kai. Yeah. Huh? That's, that's very interesting. Okay, so next. Okay, here's another <laughs> shot. <laughs> so Daniel, uh, I, I don't know. Wh where do you think this is? Is this like by his pool? Is this at a club? Or wh where do you think he is? I, I wonder how much of this country club we're going to see because it certainly could, it could be there, uh, mm -hmm. but it could be by his pool. It, right. I wonder who he's toasting. That's... <laughs> Unless it's his wife or something, or maybe this is chosen. Like I, I like the comedy aspect of sort of <laughs> the duo. Like Daniel's very straight, and Chosen has that like sarcastic humor. Right. I really like that. Um, so maybe it's him and Chosen hanging out, but it seems like maybe by his pool. It's a lot of water there for one person, though. So it, lo it looks because he's got like what six bottles there. Yeah, maybe it's at the country club. <laughs> yeah, maybe it is at the country club, and he's. Would you say he's wearing kind of a chosen esque it floral does. shirt? Yeah. yeah, it's a very chosen shirt. <laughs> <laughs> How interesting! I'm trying to relate to him. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll go with that. So yeah, he could be trying to get chosen to uh, 
smooth something over. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, okay. So now here's another picture where we have uh, Johnny and Robbie. It looks like they're in maybe a restaurant in Mexico. Yeah. It, uh, what, what do you think when you look at this? I, well, I see the milk. So when I see the milk, I think maybe they're on hot ones and they're doing like a, like a hot wing contest or something because oh. <laughs> like his face looks pretty red. I, I mean, I, there's no food <laughs> in front of them. So unless they're doing like the gallon challenge, which isn't, isn't a, a full gallon of milk, but it would be interesting if they're doing like spicy food or something. Cause they're at some type of restaurant and it would be cool if they were like eating, uh, eating all kinds of like hot wings or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's brilliant. That, I love that idea. That's, that is brilliant. Uh, the milk just says something to me, but it's tough because there's no cup or there's no plate in front of him. So it's hard to say. So I could be wrong, but I like the idea of them maybe doing a pepper eating contest or something <laughs> like ghost peppers or something. That's so fascinating. Uh, Kate says, yeah, there you go. The bowling alley. Yeah, maybe it could be, could, could very well be. Um, let's see what else do we have now? Okay. Now this, <laughs> This was kind of interesting because I don't think this was posted officially, at least in the, in the United States. This kind of came out I, maybe from Brazil. I'm not sure where this came from, but it's obviously William Zabka. Uh, looks like he's Johnny. Looks like he's dressed up as Maverick. So he's got a <laughs> Pete Mitchell uh, yeah. patch on. So oh, what is this, Drew? Do you think this has anything to do with a plot? Is this just kind of a throwaway reference to Top Gun? I hope it's like him trying to be training the guys or something as like Pete Mitchell or so. And, and I just, I still haven't seen Maverick, but I rewatched the original Top Gun like the other day. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a great movie. And and yeah. I love how Johnny's obviously obsessed with the eighties. So it's, it's very in character for him to try to pull out a, a Maverick situation. But I love that either way, even if it's a throwaway, I love the reference to it. It's, it's just a funny Johnny moment, of course. <laughs> Right. And it's uh, Alan brings up an interesting point. Iron Eagle versus Top Gun. We know how much of a fan of Iron Eagle that yeah. Johnny is. It's interesting that he's going the Top Gun route. You know? Yeah. I like that. Maybe it's a Top Gun Halloween costume. Maybe. Could it, could it be time for Halloween again? Maybe. It would be fun. Yeah, it would be cool. Kate Chappie from Iron Eagle. Maybe. It's, it's interesting. It's like if you zoom in, it's like you can see the patch and it says Pete Mitchell. Um so, and I know other people have said it's uh, Iceman, but uh, yeah, it's, I, I think it, I think it looks great. Um, so Drew, okay. So those are the images that we've seen. Uh, do you have any general thoughts before I go back again to bring up Mike Barnes? So before we get back to Mike Barnes, do you have any kind of thoughts looking at all this regarding season five? I think the lack of crease is an interesting point, right? They've made a really big point not to show anything about Crease. So he got arrested. That's the last thing we know. We don't know if he's actually in jail, if he got out on bail, who the heck knows. So that's that's interesting. The piece where you've got Miguel missing in some of the Eagle Fang Miyagi-Do pictures is also really stood out to me. And then the other piece regarding the conflict between him and Robbie is also interesting. So I think... There's these behind the scenes storylines that we can maybe speculate on, but it, it certainly seems like there's something going on with Miguel where he's not with the students uh, for whatever reason. I don't know. And that that really stands out to me. Um, and, and the fact that we got Terry being Terry is, is really great. I'm never going to complain about that. I love your theory about him trying to move in on on Amanda <laughs> because I think it would just be such a Terry Silver move. It's go after who you love the most. And uh, it would be awesome. I would love that as a, as a storyline. I think it would be amazing. Right. And he could make some really good points. I mean, Daniel could look like he's kind of going off the deep end. Yeah. You know, Terry could make points about, you know, how much has he really been supporting you at that dealership? You know, yeah. it must be hard being married to Daniel. You, you know, just, <laughs> yeah, he could, just, he could just go in. Like, he has the that. charm. <laughs> he <Yep>. has it. <laughs> yes, he does. And so it's amazing to me too, because we know Miguel's going to Mexico. We know that that's going to be a storyline. Um, we don't know, right. We haven't seen crease. We haven't seen much of Miguel. What's going on. We haven't seen stingray. We don't know what's going on with that. Mm -hmm. Um, we have new characters, not, not just the old characters. They bring in more characters. Uh, sensei Kim could be a huge character in this new season. Um, we have this guy, Mike Barnes, you know, he's, he's in this now. I mean, it really does seem like, like you were saying before, if this show could be longer, 
that would be amazing because we have so many characters here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you think you might have brought this up before? Uh, what do you think about how much Mike Barnes is going to be in season five? It wouldn't. I hope he's in it a lot. I do hope that he's a prominent character. But it wouldn't surprise me if I think a lot of folks have speculated in the chat here too. Are they setting him up for a more prominent role in the next season? Right. And I think it depends on how they bring him in because if they bring him in as somebody that is on Terry's side, maybe he's in it a lot more. If he comes in as somebody that is sort of introduced in the chaos, like they talked about adding gasoline to a fire. This is also adding even more gasoline to a fire because he really is a wild card. Nobody besides Daniel really knows him and, and Terry, obviously, but Johnny doesn't know who this guy is, at least that we're aware of. And and I think it could be really interesting. So I as I hope he's in it a lot, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't get as much from him. Like even the previous season, as much of Terry as we wanted, I think he had what, like 15 minutes of total screen time for, for Thomas e. Griffith. It wasn't a huge, huge role. He was sort of like manipulating and moving behind the scenes. We got more crease and, and some of the characters there. So uh, they have to balance it. Right. And it's a mm -hmm. hard thing for them to do because they're trying to introduce a legacy character. And if you have a show that maybe you're trying to, bring along an audience that that know that knows about this person help them see hey you brought him back but you're also trying to introduce this character to a new generation of people who may not have seen the the series it's a tough job and, and they have to find that right balance but i hope he's in it a good deal but it would not surprise me if he's if he's barely in it and maybe it goes into the next season i, I that would be my guess if i had to speculate you know i was thinking the same thing too like um yeah, the only thing that makes me think that won't happen is that it seems like most of these pictures tend to be from like the first part of the season. Watch yeah. Party made a great comment today that in the past they have released photos that are from later in the season. But, you know, it's kind of interesting, though, if he does show up later in the season, I wonder why they showed him now, yeah. you know, as as opposed to like a late season surprise. Uh, so. Yeah, it's really I would tend to agree with you, though, story wise, it would make sense to bring him back towards the end, setting up like a season six. Yeah, because my goodness, uh, there's just so much you can do with Mike Barnes. Do, do you think that I guess tied into how much he'll be in it? Do you think it'll be a situation where it's like they bring back Allie and it's like Elizabeth shoes in it for only a couple episodes? Like, I, I hope that he has a prominent role because the character has a lot of. I guess connection to to Daniel and and he's obviously a major antagonist in Karate right. Kid Three. He's not, and obviously Allie was was a major love interest for Daniel too. But they had her in it a little bit, and right. there was a narrative reason for it. I wonder if that's also why we might not be seeing a lot of it too. Like I hope he has a prominent role, but it could also be a little bit. I don't. What What do you think? Like I, I don't. I'm curious. Well, you know, I want to say, I don't know if it was Peter from Cobra Kai Companion podcast who, who mentioned this idea, but if you look back at Chosen, he was a big antagonist from yeah. Karate Kid 2. When they brought him back in season three, he was in it for, I think, maybe one and yeah. a half one episodes. And a half. Maybe, yeah, one and a half episodes. And it was a great moment and stuff. And they at the end of it, Daniel left and kind of teased that maybe he could come back again in the future. And now he's a major... Mm -hmm. player here so i don't know it's like maybe he could show up for an episode like in the first half of the season and then come back in time for the cliffhanger leading into season six yeah maybe it'll be something like that yeah i i would like that i mean it might be cool because you try to kind of do too much and then it gets a little too complicated and they've already got terry in here and you've got bringing back chosen and if you're throwing everyone in there it might get a little too complicated so right. it would be nice if they weaved it in a little bit more as much as we want to see him and as right. much as we want him to be a major character. I mean, I'm I, don't get me wrong. I'm very excited about this. Yes. <laughs> but I hope we kind of savor it a little bit, too, which it, it's sort of like a balance, I guess. In interesting. And Quick says two episodes maybe like Chosen in season yeah. three. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. Um, God of Mischief. Mike Barnes is a top wanted character for the show. So I think he'll have a big role or a few episodes at least. Yeah, you know, the more we talk about it, the more I think either he's going to be a prominent role in the season or if they bring him in early, it'll be just for an episode, but he will come back in time for the cliffhanger Yeah, uh, at the end of the season or the big climax 
maybe leading into more story for season six. Um, or maybe they'll just show them at the end. I don't know. But I, I think whatever happens in season five, you'd almost have to prominently set them up for season six, right? Yeah, I, I, I think that they should because there's enough there and enough that we don't know and and especially when you're weaving in Terry Silver and what happened with him and, and Terry in, in Karate Kid Part 3, that I think it's it's just ripe for so much more backstory and storytelling. And I think with Chosen getting thrown into the mix and all the other things that are happening and, and with Crease in jail, there's just so much that they could do with the character. I hope they don't shortchange us like they said in the chat here. Like, like they hopefully they don't. Um, because I, I think there's just a lot of opportunity for Mike Barnes and, and really Sean Kanan's awesome too. So I want to see more of him. So he, he is. Yeah. And that's right. Ben said, I don't think they're going to yeah. shortchange us with Mike Barnes. I agree. I don't think they will either. A uh, bit of Brookie says maybe the big threes end game was having Daniel team up with all his rivals from all three movies. I love that the pattern has been that way so far. How interesting. That's awesome. Great, great comment. Yeah, that is. And, I have to see, or Michael says, I can't wait to see my man chosen in action. I totally agree. Um, Drew, what do you think? I know this is kind of outside the bounds of what we know so far, but what do you think about Julie Pierce coming back? Hillary Swank. Uh, people seem to want her to face off against Kim Daun or, you know, anyone else. Do you think we'll see Hillary Swank this season? Uh, this season? I don't know, man. I... That's where that's where you start getting into. Okay, now maybe we're putting too many people in here. I think if it, it all depends on if they've officially got another season on the books, and I don't know that they do at this point. I think that they've always said that they wanted to, but I don't mm. know that it's been officially renewed. So I think if anything, it makes more sense for her to be in maybe in a, a future season, unless it's a role like Allie play, like Elizabeth Shue, where it's sort of like a, a side side. Actor, even though she was a prominent character, she was one of the main ones. Um, the connecting tissue there is is Mr. Miyagi. I don't know really if Daniel knows about her. Maybe the way they could bring her back is she's Mr. Miyagi. He's learning Mr. Miyagi had other students, and and maybe that's a way that he connected, or maybe they've talked about that. But I don't think that they've made a reference to her yet, have they? That I'm aware of. I don't think so. Yeah, not in the series. So um, yeah, it could be I interesting. Yes. Um, Zaround says Hillary Swank and Master Kim should be mortal enemies. That would be, <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. I'd, I'd love to see, you don't want to go yeah. up against Hillary Swank either. She's, yeah. she's pretty tough. Yeah, um, she is great actress too. It would be awesome to have her on the show. Oh yeah. So many, so many great performers. Uh, Marianella says maybe Julie will show up in the last episode like Chosen did. Yeah, yeah, that could that could happen too. Yeah. Um, and James says hardly anyone talks about Karate Kid four these days. It'd be a good way to renew interest, just like season four renewed interest in Karate Kid Part yeah. Three. Yeah, I think so too. I think four, so too. Well, four, four exists in this like weird universe too. Like you mentioned earlier in the show that we were talking about, like one through three is a very cohesive trilogy. Four, it, it's not a bad movie. It's just it's not as popular, and it just sort of feels like it's on its own thing. It, it, maybe it's we talked about this before. It's like because it was sort of in the 90s it yeah. felt out of place i don't know yeah. <laughs> yeah i think you're right it's yeah the first three were very much 80s movies you know as daniel exclaims hey it's the 80s you know <laughs> and uh but yeah the next karate kid it really feels like the 90s maybe attempting to do an 80s type thing but it doesn't quite i don't know it's a different feel yeah so uh well drew so this has been amazing we've gone through so much news we've gone through so many ideas about mike barnes and terry silver and cobra kai season five do you have any kind of final thoughts uh before we wrap up tonight yeah i, I guess touching on what we talked about a little bit throughout the show i'm just so excited to finally see certain characters being on the same screen together and I think it, it, we've talked about what a time to be a Terry Silver fan. What a time to just be a fan of the show and, and really the universe. And if you like these characters, they really are doing it justice. And, and I got to give them a lot of credit for the way that they're doing it. They're doing it in a way that, as I've said before, it just makes narrative sense. And as much as we want to see these characters, I think they do it in a way where they're just not throwing somebody at you. And, and I think there's a lot to be said for that because they could easily just plop in characters for no reason. I think when we get somebody, there, there's a real reason for them to be there. And, and the chosen piece, right? You think about the previous season when he showed up, it was to teach Daniel a lesson and he was trying to learn more and reconcile. And now he's playing a prominent role in it. It wasn't just, hey, here's chosen. He's in this cafe for no reason, right? There's a, right. There's a point for him. And even Terry Silver, as we've talked about before, 
I'm excited to see the arc that Terry continues to go on. And we're getting more backstory of that. I hope we get more flashbacks of Vietnam. I hope we get more of him and John Kreese. Uh, but I'm just so excited to see more of one of my favorite all-time villains, if not my all-time favorite villain, mm -hmm. just more screen time for the guy. And uh, what more can you say, right? <laughs> He's just yeah. so awesome. I, I agree. Um, I certainly hope they utilize Sean Cannon as Mike Barnes. That's going to be an amazing return. And you're right. I don't think they'll shortchange us on that. Yeah. And then, of course, Terry Silver, Thomas Ian Griffith. I really hope they continue to utilize him throughout the remainder of the show. He's just such a great actor and it's such a great character. Uh, yeah. it's probably my favorite character on television right now. You know? Same. Uh, and uh, so really looking forward to season five. And I just want to thank you, Drew, for coming on tonight. I want to thank everyone watching this. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for all of your comments, all of your great comments. I always learn something new every time when we do a live stream from you guys. Um, thank you so much for all the super chats and your support for the channel. And uh, Drew, this is the first Ken cast after dark. So <laughs> I, I kind of liked it. It's been kind of a nice late night conversation. And uh, well, maybe we'll have to do some more of these. Yeah, I, I, I've had a blast. And, you know, everyone in the chat, just thanks for all your I'm learning a lot of stuff too myself. And I like what people call me out when I'm wrong too, because please do, because <laughs> my memory gets bad this late at night. But no, I, I've had a blast, and this is this is a lot of fun, man. Ken Cast After Dark is, you know, I like the music too. Your your new music is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank 80s. you very much. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, God, man, what a great decade, right? Uh, so. All right. Well, thank, thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for watching. And we look forward to seeing you next time. KenCast this Saturday will be uh, a special one. I'll be talking with Peter from Cobra Kai Companion about Karate Kid Part 2. Awesome. So uh, everyone, uh, be sure to tune in for that and have a good week. We'll keep our ears pinned to all kinds of new news. <laughs> have, have a good night.